गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीबॉडी बोलो बोलो तुम्हारा ना नंबर आप तुषार भाई
all the participants are requested to join with their registered name only so we can verify you that will really help us to verify your attendance please those who have joined the sessions with other name or some participants join with their mobile numbers kindly rename it so we can verify your attendance that will help you to distribute and all of the certificates this is the humble request to all of you
Dr. D.T. Patel, sir, are you there? Am I audible? Dr. Tusar Patel. Hello. Dr. Tusar Patel. Good morning, everyone. Uh, participants are joining. So we will start our session in a short time. Can you hear me, sir?
डॉक्टर डी डी पटेल सर आई यू देर Hello. So there is uh, some internet issue over here. Hello. So be with us. Hello. 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 Ah, I am here, you sir. Hello. Am I audible, sir? Hello. Ah, Dr. Vidhi Patel, sir. Am I audible, sir? Hello. Hello. Yes, yes. Ah, uh, uh, you are audible. You are audible, but echo is there. Hello. Echo is there. So. Yes, yes. So. हेलो 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 यस 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 डॉक्टर तुषार पटेल देयर इज अ प्रॉब्लम इन योर वॉइस दैट इज इको इज देयर हेलो इको इज देयर हेलो एम आई ऑडिबल या 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 सर यू आर ऑडिबल इज इट इज इट इज इट ओके विद माय वॉइस सर हेलो 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 इज इट ओके विथ माय वॉइस हेलो 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 एम आई वाडे बोल सर Dear participant, please bear with us. We will start the session when we reach more than hundred participant.
Shall we start, sir? Yes, yes. Okay. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I would be great pleasure to welcome you all on behalf of the president, convener, organizer, and my personal behalf on the second day of webinar that is on scope of agriculture and entrepreneurship development. Again, welcome you all on virtual platform of the webinar. This is Dr. Tusar Patel. I am organizing secretary of, and I am assistant professor of agronomy. Today, I would like to introduce the dignitaries over here. Yes, sir. Now, Dr. Kitel, sir, a dean, faculty of agriculture, and principal of agriculture, Nausari Agriculture University, Nausari. In fact, he's a very much eager to uh, engage in administratively join us from first day and encourage we people. I welcome you, sir, on behalf of the organizing committee. Thank you so much for your courage, support, and care. We have also with us Dr. D.D. Patel, sir, Professor and Head, Department of Agronomy and Convener no. of the webinar. Uh, however, Dr. Suresh Bamaniya, Dr. Manish Jinjale has also joined the sessions. He yes. look after the participant attendance as well as they also look after, after the chat box. So you will put up your comments, your questions on chat box. We will bring up after uh, end of the first lectures. Now I invite Dr. D.D. Patel, sir, to throw some lights on today's sessions. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Tusar Patel. So good morning to all of you here with us, uh, Dr. K.G. Patel, respective Dr. K.G. Patel, Dean, College of Agriculture, Bharuj, and all dear participants. So today we have five lectures among this, uh, first lecture will be given by our uh, Dean, Dr. K.G. Patel, sir. So we have uh, covered most of each and every aspect of the agriculture that are related, which are related to the entrepreneurship development. So he will uh, discuss on the component of natural resources for entrepreneurship development. Then after Dr. Lalit Mahatma, he will talk on the biofertilizer industry as well as, uh, then after Sri Raju Bhai, Patel, the innovative farmer, entrepreneur, will give his success story. Uh, then after the, Dr. Meenal Tandel will discuss on the development uh, in, uh, that is entrepreneurship development in forestry. Then after Dr. C.K. Timbaria, that is the principal scientist, uh, will give the role of KVK in entrepreneurship development in rural area. So, uh, uh, this all lectures are very good and, and uh, these lectures will give us very good information related to the entrepreneurship development. And all participants are requested to attend all the sessions. You will get definitely very good information. In every session, your presence is noticed, which will be considered for the distribution of certificates. So you be with us during all the sessions. So uh, thanking you very much. And uh, now the session is over to uh, Dr. Tusar Patel. Thank you, Dr. Didi Patel, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, we, uh, we are having a great opportunity to listen the word of great knowledgeable speaker and visionary personality of our college, Dr. K.G. Patel, sir. His talk is on components of natural resources for entrepreneurship developments. I would like to share some brief information regarding Dr. K.G. Patel, sir. He born and brought up in farmer family. He did his PhD in agriculture anthropology from Nausari Agriculture University. He experienced teaching, research, extension, and administration for more than 37 years. As an entomologist, he, he achieved so many things. He had completed 10 research projects. He uh, developed 29 farmers' recommendations that will really help up to boost up the agriculture productions and productivities. He published more than 76 research papers across the world that uh, belongs to international as well as national journey. In 
heard about contributions of Dr. K. G. Patel, sir. He is uh, actively participate in developing of the three paddy varieties. Yeah. Uh, under his guidance, total 15 students uh, went complete his graduation that include master as well as PhD. He also delivered the talks in various occasions. Uh, that is in Kedu Sibir, Krishi Mela's exhibitions, even in scientific platforms. He is a recipient of the four most prestigious academic awards as well as two research awards from ICR as well as uh, very reputed scientific bodies. He holds the positions of registrar uh, and uh, library officers. Presently, he is acting as a dean and principal, Faculty of Agriculture, College of Agriculture, Nausari Agriculture University, Baruch. This is somewhat brief about Dr. K.G. Patel, sir. Now, I invite Dr. K.G. Patel, sir, to share his virtual platform and ignite our mind with his vast experience, sir. Dr. K.G. Patel, sir, you are requested to proceed further, share your screen and take the chart. The platform is yours, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, Dr. Prasad, and good morning, everyone, for introducing me in a very well manner. So, now I'm going to start my topic, Federal Resources for Agriculture Alternative. Before we start this topic, there are some questions will be arise in the mind of everyone. Because the most of the entrepreneurship will be uh, students, or some farmers or some other persons. So I can say that what is entrepreneurship? So entrepreneurship is the one kind of small business. One has to start with a small business and go up yes. and up. Who can start entrepreneurship? So here there is no limitation. Anyone can start entrepreneurship. Any learned person. Why I'm taking a uh, the learned person? Because nowadays the uh, knowledge based business are there. So anyone that means any educated person will start the entrepreneurship. Why entrepreneurship are needed? So, uh, the entrepreneurship means to be self-reliant. Our honorable prime minister also focus that our country should be self-reliant. So, the person of the country will be self-reliant, then uh, country uh, itself will be self-reliant. That we have seen in the COVID-19 situation. That, our, that we are more self-reliant than any other country of the world. Why on natural resources on agriculture? So again, the question is arise. There are so many components are there in the in the era, but we but I should focus on natural resources of agriculture because they are easily available with minimum cost. Now, before the before uh, starting business uh, as an entrepreneur, we should uh, go some back, back information that why we should and what is the real situation in the India. Uh, now, the status of fertilizers and pesticides are used. So, globally, consumption of fertilizers has been on the rise. According to FAO, the consumption of fertilizers such as nitrogenous, potash, and phosphate fertilizers touch all-time high more than 140 kilogram per hectare of arable land in 2016. In India, the green revolution was a major turning point resulting in increase of chemical usage. Because... Uh, this thing is more important because if we will focus on the natural resources management, then we should uh, have knowledge regarding chemical fertilizer and such, all the things. So according to FO, again, India fertilizer consumption has increased from less than 1 million ton of total nutrients in the 1960s to almost 7 million tons in early 2000s. So this is due to the green, green revolution and use of the high yielding varieties at all. As with the figures submitted in the Lok Sabha in March 2020, India's fertilizer consumption was close to 500 lakh metric tons. Furthermore, consumption of urea, urea is very important source of nitrogen in high distorted ratio as compared to the desired NPK ratio. That is only 4.4 to 2 is to 1. The national usage ratio is put at 6.7 is to 2.4 and is to 1. The fertilizer consumption, as we seen, that more in Punjab, Haryana, yeah, are the states, and maximum uh, usage is there in the sugarcane, cotton, and paddy. More in the world, the Indian pesticide market was worth Rs. 197 million in 2018. Uh, the total as well as per hectare consumption of pesticide in India was a significant increase after 2009 10 
The recent increase in pesticide use is said to be because of higher use of herbicide as the cost of manual weed control has risen due to increase in agriculture usage. On the other hand, uh, per hectare consumption of pesticide was the highest in Punjab, followed by Haryana and Maharashtra. So far as uh, uh, organic agriculture is concerned, India has nearly 0.7% of total agricultural land under organic cultivation. The industry has, has a long journey ahead. Nowadays, everywhere, the people are conscious about their health and they demand the organic products. So, there is a, so far so too much more journey in, a, in a organic farming. Based on the area under different crops and dose of biofertilizer, because biofertilizer is an important component of the organic farming, and to be applied, National Biofertilizer Development Center, NBDC, Gajabad has estimated that the total requirement of biofertilizer to be about 5.07 ton, lakh tons. The use of the, the use of the bio pesticides is also growing at a faster place than that of the chemical pesticides. According to industry, Indian Ministry of Agriculture, in the last 10 years, consumption of uh, uh, bio pesticide increased by 23%. By 2%. The main reason for such massive boost in bio pesticide is the government support for the bio fertilizer industry and rising awareness among the farmers. So here you can say that there is a uh, vast development which will be there in the uh, natural resources, uh, use of the nickel sources. So biofertilizer, biofertilizer is one of the best components for the nickel resources in agriculture. In 2016, the biofertilizer consumption was recorded 15% of the total pesticide consumption, indicating its vast potential. Now, before starting the entrepreneurship in agriculture, we should know which are the low cost components that can be utilized for the, agri the agriculture entrepreneurship. So here there are some components. They are known as a natural resource in agriculture, that is the biofertilizer organisms, botanicals, bioagent and biopesticide, weed killers, organic manures, and vermicompost, compost from biodegradable plant waste, green manures, zero-budget nickel farming components, and banana solution, this is an extraordinary one. Now, regarding biofertilizers, so uh, to start the, to be entered to printership by uh, if a person uh, want to start the uh, natural component among them, here are some bio biofertilizers. Here is a uh, Biofertilizers, that is a nitrogen fixing biofertilizer, phosphorus solubility biofertilizers, rhizobium, azotobacter, azola, baby algae, and azospirum. Now, phosphorus solubilizer, bacillus, pseudomonas, aspergillus, and penicillin, and uh, uh, mycorrhiza. So, these are the important biofertilizers. What is the role of that biofertilizer and how they look? So, these are the uh, rhizobium, azotobacter, this is a PSB, this is a baby algae, azospirum, mycorrhiza. Now, they are all symbiotically nitrogen fixing vector and they are very useful in the, uh, uh, in the policies and scale crop also. Now, these are all the, uh, this is the culture of the rhizobium. We should know, the entrepreneurs should know the, what types of their books and how can they prepare in the laboratory. The azotobacters, uh, acetobacter, the application of the acetobacter in sugarcane as a set treatment, saving 50% requirement of nitrogen fertilizer. As uh, the, the input cost is much increased by applying the chemical fertilizer, so this is a good option that is acetobacter and sugarcane that can reduce the 50% saving of the nitrogen. So if anybody can start entrepreneur, so this, this is very important uh, to start there. My acetobacter is look like this. My azospirulum. Again, azospirulum is also a very important bioorganism that can be useful in the uh, cereal crops and many other crops that can be helped to the root development. And uh, 20 to 40 percent nitrogen can be saved by use of azospirulum. Now, azola. It is one of the important azola, as we know that uh, it, uh, it is a uh, compost within 8 to 10 days and can supply 67 percent nitrogen to the paddy crop. And uh, 
azola uh, multiply in paddy field can supply 25 to 50 percent hydrogen to paddy. This is azola. Now, brigade algae, butane algae uh, is one of the also very important bio uh, it is organism that is component for uh, natural resource management. It is also useful in the paddy crop and it can supply 20 to 25 even hydrogen per hectare. Now, phosphorus solvabilizing bacteria is very important for sugarcane crop and it can save 50 percent. Now, there are some products available in the market in the name of Norogi. So, this is a very good uh, component. If anybody start uh, want to start the entrepreneur, then this uh, these are the important uh, component when the wants to uh, start. And for that, one has to start with the biocontrol laboratory. So, biocontrol laboratory is a good minimum cost. Now, some botanicals. So, botanical pesticides are there. As we uh, seen earlier that the chemical pesticide has created a lot, lot of problems in the environment, and uh, soil and uh, soil and water also, and create a hazard problem. So now people are want, uh, want organic products. So botanical is one of the important components for the organic farming or you can say natural farming. And uh, the peoples are started organic farming in in world across, and there are number of the uh, more are also started to sell the uh, the organic products and organic uh, to produce organic products. One should have to go for the organic uh, biopesticide, organic biofertilizer like that. So here and uh, in the plant protection, the botanical biopesticides are very important. So if one should uh, want to start the alternate of the uh, botanical, so number of the bot number of the plants are there in the nature. So uh, with, the, with the help of that plant, one can start entrepreneurship to uh, produce the biopesticide. So here the nicotine is the problem. Nicotine that is tobacco plant. Tobacco plant is very important. And the dust of the tobacco is, is very important. It, it can also help to control the many sucking pests and many organic pests also. The pyrothermic is also one of the important plants. That is the chrysanthemum is largely used in the household insect pest. Uh, the peak lockdown effects, marilyn toxic is also very low. And nicotine pyrethrin is unstable and has a, um, has a no residual effect. So it is very important for the uh, environment point of view, soil and uh, health hazards also. Uh, some other plant that is the berries, rotenone. Rotenone is obtained from the roots of the berries plant and used for the control of the second phase. So ecoparasite are uh, in the early stage of the crop, second pest are very dangerous. So it can be control resistant in the market. There are so many uh, products are available of this. Uh, it is very important. It can this can be prepared from the seeds of the South and Central American plant. And this this uh, the attack of this uh somebody I close are very toxic to insect. So one can go for a thing to um, product also. Now, Rhenia plant, it is also very important plant and it is acting in the stomach and contact poison and it is less toxic to the than what I know. Now, sweet flax, sweet flax is grown in many parts of the India. It is a mixture of the powder and a mixture of its powder, water and salt can be used as a spray against every and caterpillar. Now, every and caterpillar are important pests uh, in so many vegetables, cereals and ornamental crops, so it can be controlled easily with this the powder of this sweet flax. Now, custard apple, the seed of the custard apple contains the con it is contact and stomach poison. Now, very little all parts of the use uh, again, the red cotton bulb. Now, garlic, that is rhizomes, I think, I think that the garlic is the important market uh, trade uh, is available, and that is the garlic. Now, Congress grass, the, the leaf extract of this uh, use again the caterpillar. So, soil import, that is storage paste, is also important for the uh, soil import, it is for the storage paste. Now, African marigold, as we know that uh, marigold is very, very important for as a, as a insect growth regulator and it can be helpful to prevent the many insect pests in the important crops. Now, Pongania, that is seed, oil, and extract, it is again uh, for the storage insect pest. The leaf extract of the eucalyptus, it uh, use again the caterpillars and spring insect pest. Now, medicinal and aromatic plants are also have a some interdisciplinary properties and they can be used to control the insect pest or to prevent insect pest in many, many crops. So, Nagod, Karinth, Karsali, Lui, and Lili 
are important for us. Again, herbs and shrub are also very important. So their leaves are very good. And uh, any caterpillar can use this plant to make the biomedicine. And, and uh, their their machinery and their uh, active machinery are very, very cheap. So it can be used, useful to extract the leaf or of, of some seed powder. Now, Kariya to Sena, Ami, is a very important plant. They have insect property and they can be useful to manage the insect pest. Now some uh, ornamental plants having also property, that is a lashon veil, moon veil, moon veil and kocha. The leaf extract of these are very useful to manage this case. Very important, and they are also available in the market also. So uh, there is a very good option for the uh, chemical insecticide. There are neem oil, pongam oil, coconut oil, sesame oil, Mahom oil, similar oil, castor oil, palm oil, and mustard oil. So it is very useful for the storage test and uh, useful for the setting test also. Now, dry leaf powder, that is neem, custard apple, arunsi, mint, eucalyptus, garlic, ulsi, pongam, kalmet. These are useful also, and it can be useful to prevent the storage test also. Now, method for preparation of the neem chip for the lab. So, every, in every village, because most of the, our natural resources are available in the, our rural area, because our 70% natural resources are there in rural area, and majority of the, uh, our people are living in the rural area, and the neem is our very old plant, and neem seed are available easily from the village area also, or the forest area also. So, one can collect the, collect the seed, and uh, that seed, uh, quantity of the kernels we weigh, uh, suppose if you want to collect 250 gram seed, and we have to grind, and then get the powder in the machine to make, and sort it into little sort of water for overnight. And thereafter, the wax is repeatedly outflowing to the ground color. Finally, prepare the required volume uh, by adding the water. And these are uh, nutrient kernel extracts are very useful for the setting test also, and also for some. Uh, uh, early stage of the larvae uh, at the work as an entrepreneur and the land also. Now, alcohol extension from the neem seed. So, this is a, again, uh, in the neem, neem seed, there is a one important insecticide property is the agarirate uh, content. And agarirate content can be extracted with the help of the alcohol uh, method of the alcohol extension method. So, agarirate and other luminoids, the substances, uh, neem insecticide properties are highly soluble in the alcohol. Alcoholic extracts are over 50 times as concentrated as ordinary extracts. So they can alcoholic extract some the kernel in either ethanol or methanol, and then strain and filter the brew. The concentration of the resulting extract can vary greatly from 20% to over 6% at the ingredient. And unless purified the crude extract and adjust the concentration and the pH, the solution will not be stable. The active ingredient in neem usually decomposes rapidly. So one should think on this also because this is very important. And nowadays in the market, so many products are available on the basis of the agar agar. So it is a very, very cheap uh, little source, very cheap. And uh, the procedure is also uh, not too much costly. So one can go for this also. Now, method for the extension and the whole and port water. This is within two methods. The preparation of the tobacco decoction. The uh, tobacco decoction, again, tobacco is very important in such a property plant. So in the, uh, the whole water treatment, that is the 500 gram tobacco leaf dust to be swapped in 5 liters of the water and be kept for overnight. Uh, so very next day, it should be boiled at 60 to 70 degree temperature for one hour and volume of 5 liters be maintained by adding additional water and filter with mustard glue. The stock solution to be diluted with water in ratio of 1 to 4 in the stock solution at 200 gram washing soap at the time of the application. Now, uh, to make the tobacco decoction with the help of the cold water, same procedure required to be followed except for boiling. Except for boiling. And spray solution should be prepared fresh day 
default spray application and be diluted with water just default spray. So again, now the public water is a very important problem in Middle Gujarat and uh, so in, in Maharashtra also. So the public water can be available with a cheap rate and it can be useful for the so they can enter to the sports. Now, method for preparation of the milk powder for storage is at least. So now again, some milk powder can be made easy and it can be sold uh, by, uh, by uh, taking in a small packet also. I like the fresh leaf of the botanical plants that I used on earlier and from the source and wash with the fresh water. After washing dry under the shade and grind to make to find powder in the mix and keep in a tight container. Use the recommended quantity and mix with grain. After thorough mixing, store them in a airtight container in dry and poor places and it can be useful for uh, managing the forest uh, fish and many other places. Now available Available products are based on the uh, name as a directing. Now, these are some products available in the market Nemazol, Achuk, Vanguard, Econ, HNX, Nicotine, and New Oil, like this. Now, the point is for the management of the insect paste and uh, infecting various crops. Neem care powder is also very important, and neem fertilizers are used in the field of the improved soil fertility and protect the uh, Nowadays, there is a problem of sustainability in agriculture. There is uh, indiscriminate use of the chemical and uh, chemical fertilizers, chemical insecticide. Our soil become unstable. So to uh, become soil sustainable, uh, we should go for the biopesticide and fertilizer. And there is a tremendous scope in uh, uh, natural resources management based uh, entrepreneurship. That is, very, that is very important. Now, neem capsule, neem face wash, neem juice, then skin care product, then face wash, gen, etc. are also being used in household and food. In uh, Gujarat, the JNFC company has also started the new face wash, new juice, new skin care product, new face wash, gel like care. So, uh, JNFC company is one of the very important and uh, got the award from the government of India also. And uh, we can start the small scale industry that I mentioned. Now, some bioagents and biopesticides. So, biogen, again, this is very important. This is a tedious job. But when should we have to establish biogen for laboratory? We say we need a minimum equipment. Now, natural will be natural. That can be useful to manage the insect pest of the many crops. So, these are the parasitoids and parasites and the predators. So, of course, there are few laboratories in the Gujarat and the India also. But they are, there is a tremendous scope in are the biochemical laboratory. So not only biochemical laboratory, with, but we with uh, increase in number other so many biopesticides with biochemical laboratory is very useful. So these are the type of gamma terodinates that are the very important parasitoids. So these parasitoids can be useful to manage the uh, paste of uh, the chickpea, pigeon pea, and tobacco. So here again, uh, epanchylus, grapon, uh, cherops, and dogas, these are very important parasitoids. Now These are also some para nymphal parasitoids. African emerald, this is very important. Oxygenalids. So these are the beetles are very useful predators. Again, many fish, Mesopala. So all the parasitoids and the, para and the predators are very important bioagents, but it's, it should be take uh, too much care to start the entrepreneurship because it is a living material and one should uh, not start school. We have to we have incorporated with Adam uh, entrepreneurship also. It is a uh, it can be useful as a supplement business. Now bacteria, uh, spore form bacillus, not for formula pseudomonas and host lepidopterus. These are also very important bacteria that can be used. Now, uh, different species of the bachelor's are colonialists. It's bachelor's colonialists, popularly, and uh, subtle species. There are so many other species also. Now, uh, commercially, available that is uh, detail, dolphin, these are also commercially available in the market. So, it is a very important thing also. Now, these uh, formulas are, are useful. Some some virus formula, some virus are also there that can be 
taken care of the hylothes, odoptera, and many men, they pair hood specific. So suppose once you start the uh, uh, to collect the uh, uh, the virus detected on hylothes armigera. So this is the host specific. So we, we he has to uh, uh, prepare the solution. Uh, that that can be host species. That is the ATMP for hydrothes, uh, Spodoptera NP for Spodoptera and it can be it can be easily prepared in the uh, small laboratory also, and it can be sold in the market. And the farmers are very aware to use this for the organic farming and natural farming. Now, anthropogenic fungi are also very important. Devagia, Desiana, Amanda Some of the laboratories in Gujarat are produce very uh, very mass scale and Cash crop, ornamental, what knowledge can be used? 
this one we were contain many benefiting microbes helping plant growth and preventing infections also sugar phenols and amino acid are also present hormones promoting plant growth like uh, indole acetic acid sibelic acid and fumaric acid are present as well this is the procedure how to prepare the vermicompost this is a very simple procedure set up the drum or barrel with an outlet Uh, on a couple of bricks to facilitate the bricks about 10 cm taken as shown above here make it make a layer of sand 2 to 3 cm thick so this is the layer of the sand fill with a vermi compost with heavy population of earthworm moisten the soil well and expose it and leave 15 days to to acclimatize So after the 15 days, you have to collect the watery yellow fish to black extract of vermi compost. Vermi was drained out of the drum. So after the 15-20 uh, days, you have to collect it, and this is ready for the use. So this is the vermi compost fertilizer. This is the vermi was. Again, these are these are also available market, but very few people are producing that. So there is a tremendous scope to prepare this, and it is a very very useful product for the organic farming and even for the zero budget cancer zero budget farming. Now compost from biodegradable plant waste. So oh, this is a compost means a mass of rotted organic matter and made from waste from compost made from uh, farm waste like sugar cane, grass, paddy straw, weeds, and other plants. The waste is called compost. The compost made from uh, from town refuse like light soil, seed, seedling, and wood waste is very small. Composting is essentially a microbial decomposition of organic material. Collected from rural area, rural compost, urban area, urban compost. Now, mechanism of the composting. Composting is a biochemical process in which aerobic and anaerobic microorganisms decompose organic matter into valuable matter called a compost. Now, everywhere there is a problem how to how to um, how to destroy the uh, waste product. Whether it may be in rural area or urban area, so here was important uh, important that it can be uh, easily be destroyed and be used as a manure also. Now release the heat, thermophilic state, which help to destroy pathogens. Uh, this is like organic matter, temperature fifty five to sixty degree centigrade. Organic matter, isophilic state, temperature twenty five three hundred, and uh, promote means isophilic decomposition. So isophilic matter is full. So the rapid decomposition at a temperature of 55 to 60 degrees centigrade, composting is like that. The method of composting, there are here four methods are there for the decomposition. They are very useful. Now these are the product available in the market also. Now green manuring or the seed production. Now actually green manuring is a different thing. It is useful for the manure in the soil structure, but but there are seed, uh, the production of the seed are very important, and, and we can sell in the market and farmer can easily use this as a green manure production. Now, why use of the green manure? They are using soil organic matter and soil structure, and they having a problem to sustain their soil. So these are very important uh, component for the sustainability in the agriculture. Now, besides this, there are so many. Uh, organic there are so many natural natural components are there in agriculture that can be useful for the but here I, it is not possible to cover all the topic but some other speakers in this uh, webinar they are taking care of this topic these are the milk production that is dairy uh, will be taken care uh, by the uh, yes part of the and uh, animal nutrient food will be taken care uh, by the milk potato that is poultry animal Then uh, aquatic nutrient will be taken by take care by Solanki agriculture uh, have already take care by the doctor. These are pasta, they are mushroom cultivation, and nursery are other uh, components for which are now green man that green man crops. Now zero budget farming, zero budget natural farming. So all these components are also useful for the, what is zero budget natural farming. This is the farm of low external suitable agriculture. All inputs are to be local resources. From in and around the village that I have already discussed, children and can be useful for zero budget farming also and can be used for the, uh, to make the entrepreneurship also. Power of natural where the uh, no external inputs need to be purchased 
sir i would like to say that when we talk about the virus uh, the first thing come in mind that is uh, that make, making a threat for we people either it may cause a human being or it may cause uh, agriculture itself but uh, some of the viral species uh, that might have helpful in agricultures so you can simply divert the concept of the uh, peoples you have also narrated about the vermeer technology nowadays it's a big issue to how to recycle the resources you have discussed about the vermi compost and vermi wash this is a good concept sir if farmers are uh, recycle their own resources uh, they become entrepreneurs of course sir that's a good one you have also discussed about the compostings uh, of course green manuring sir so when we talk about the green manuring that is normally used to improve the fertility of the soils but uh, you have uh, put the questions on seed availabilities of course sir if the person they are ready to provide the seed they become a good entrepreneur sir you have uh, just open the components of green manuring for uh, entrepreneurs you have also take a, uh, discuss about the natural farming as uh, now we call as a zero budget farming also sir and recently uh, what uh, what is the pride movement of nau that is about the banana system based of course sir it's a big issue to deal with the wastage of the banana and banana related products sir so we have developed the strategy we have developed the protocol to utilize that banana waste you have covered every everything sir and your presentation clearly reflect your vast experience your vast knowledge uh, definitely we people are enlightened with your uh, resourceful talk sir thank you so, so much sir again thank you sir now uh, our i am talking about our next speaker uh sir kindly stop to share your presentation sir ओके ओके सर ओके सर ओके नाउ दिस इज टाइम फॉर अवर नेक्स्ट लेक्चर अवर नेक्स्ट पिक्चर स्पीकर who did his graduation and post graduation from Rajasthan College of Agriculture during 1966 and 1990 uh, he joined a gujarat agriculture university at anand campus for his phd in plant pathology and work on the plant virus for phd degree programs he is a fellow of indian society of mycology and plant pathology immediately after the submission of the thesis during 2004 he joined a myco research center as a scientist and worked for 4 years till 2008 from the may 2008 onward he joined as a assistant professor at nawsari agriculture university nawsari presently he is working as a associate professor and looking forward uh, regarding the biofertilizer unit at nawsari in the field of plant virology uh, dr saab is the first person in the world to find out the presence of any gemini virus in the seeds and subsequently elucidated seed to seedling path of the virus he has been awarded with the prestigious best teacher award of nawsari agriculture university nawsari that is sponsored by the icr he is also recipient of the professor s c dubey outstanding young scientist uh, young scientist award during 2015 He is a recipient of PP Single Memorial Pesticide Industrial Award during 2014s. So, in general, he is awarded more than ten uh, awards from the uh, reputed institute as well as from the scientific bodies. He publishes more than 40 research papers in the scientific journals of the national and international conference. He is also a present organizing secretary of the 
uh, many uh, events. Uh, so what I am talking, he is nothing but the man who is devoted his uh, entire service in the research of the biofertilizers. With the long list of his achievement and glory, I would like to introduce Dr. Lalit Mahatma, sir, Associate Professor, Department of Plant Pathology. Sir, please put some lights on the scope of biofertilizer industries in India. Now, the platform is yours, sir. Welcome, sir. Dr. Lalit Mahatma, sir. Uh, participants are requested to wait a few minutes. Uh, the speaker uh, will join the soon. Mm, I will have more money Dr. Lalit Mahatma, sir, are you there, sir? Good morning, everybody. Is I am audible? Yes, yes, yes sir. You are audible. Welcome, sir, on the virtual platform of this three day seminar. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Tushar, for introducing me. But I am confused after the first uh, very exhaustive lecture of uh, Dr. K.G. Patel, sir. That is, there is anything for me to speak on the scope of biofertilizer industries in India. I am really worried about this uh, after this uh, lecture of uh, Dr. K.G. Patel, sir. Uh, so, uh, first of all, I would like to thank Dr. K.G. Patel, sir for the planning of this uh, web series, uh, inviting me to speak something on the biofertilizers. And before my presentation, you have opened the mind of all the speakers uh, about the various uh, scope of entrepreneurship, particularly biofertilizers. Because after listening to your presentation, I also came to know that the demand of biofertilizer what uh, in the nation is more than five lakh ton. Really, when I was uh, listening to your presentation, I came to know that, oh my God, such a huge demand of biofertilizer is there at the national level. But when we look at ourselves, we are even not producing five percentage or two percentage of what the demand is there. So just by looking at the one figure you gave, I can say here that the biofertilizer industry is having a lot of scope and demand and those who don't have much time and patience to listen much things can go and start their own biofertilizer production because still the stockholder has not paid the due attention on the production and marketing of the biofertilizers. What are the problems being faced by these people in this entire business? I'm going to discuss here in my presentation. Before that, I just would like to discuss with all the gathering, all the audience, that every day we need something to eat. What we are eating, we are eating the different stuff every day. Say for example, chapati, rice, dal, vegetables, sweets, curd, all these things we are eating every day in the morning and many times in the day. Why actually we are eating all these things? Because basically we need carbohydrate, protein, fat, vitamins and minerals to uh, sustain our life or to run our body. So we are heterotrophic 
animals, they are remain dependent on the food prepared basically by someone else. But when you talk about the plants, the plants also need so many things for its own growth and development. And one thing about the plant is generally said, we everybody knows that plant are the autotrophic. They have got a road has just to give the excellent capacity to convert the physical and chemical energy into the biological energy. And the same biological energy is channelized and reaches to the different uh, uh, hierarchy in the food web, food chain or in the food pyramid. So primary producers are there, primary consumers are there, secondary consumers are there and so on. The energy is channelized in the same direction. But what the plant is eating? Dear friends, plant is not eating any of the biological material directly. I am talking about the biological material in the sense biomolecule like a carbohydrate, glucose, fatty vitamin, all these things are biomolecules. So plants are not taking this biomolecule directly. But instead of this, plants are taking raw chemical materials and through this chemical materials they are synthesizing the food. So plants basically require certain nutrients. There are 17 certain nutrients which has been identified which is required by the plant. Out of these 17 nutrients, the three nutrients you can see here, the macronutrients is the top of the list in this presentation that this three element carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. This is coming to the plant through the air and water. So when these nutrients are coming to the plant through the air and water, we did not to worry about this. The God has provided sufficient air and water. Though all the things has been provided by the God, but this is abundantly available and we did not to provide to the plant. Other than this, when you talk about the macronutrients, then there are three major elements, nitrogen, phosphorus and potash is required by the plant in a higher quantity. That's why those are known as the macronutrients. When you talk about the micronutrients, then the calcium, magnesium and sulfur are the micronutrients which is required by the plant. And then the trace elements are there. There are eight trace elements which is required by the plant. These include the chlorine, iron, manganese, boron, zinc, copper, molybdenum and nickel. To remember these uh, micronutrient trace elements, I have written two words here, climb and zucumoni. If you remember these two words, climb and zucumoni, it will be very easy for you to remember. And particularly these nutrients, trace nutrients, and all these nutrients has been arranged in such a beautiful way that the nutrient which is coming in the first is required in the more quantity than the nutrient which is coming in the second order. So if you remember these nutrients in this phrase, it will be very easy for you to remember these things. When you talk about the content of this, uh, like how much the plant in its dry matter is containing the different nutrients, then as, as I said that I have arranged all these things in a chronology. Here also you will find that uh, nitrogen, phosphorus and the potash are the three important nutrients which is required in the macro. Here when we talk about there is a confusion between so many people, that's why I have highlighted this. That when we talk about the nitrogen, phosphorus and potash, we talk in this order, nitrogen, phosphorus and potash. But when it comes to the component of plant on the basis of dry weight, then the potash is more in the plant than the phosphorus. So I have written this in a different order just for this information. Other than this, nutrients are required by the plants in a different quantity. Dear friends, uh, uh, like how we came to know that these nutrients are required by the plant. So for that earlier there was a different thought. People were hearing that okay uh, this plant when it is growing, I am talking about the thousand years back also that the plant is growing in the plant soil. Then everything must be coming from the soil. Even the carbon and hydrogen and oxygen which I said in the beginning that it is coming from the air. The people thought that these are also coming from the soil. After that, people just uh, worked with so many things on this and came to certain uh, criteria of the essentiality. Those criteria of the essentiality says that these nutrients are essential. These criteria are like an element is essential if being deficient, the plant is unable to complete the vegetative or reproductive stage of its life cycle. The second is that the deficiency can be prevented or corrected only by supplying the specific element causing the deficiency. Here, I mean here that the deficiency can be prevented by or corrected by the supplying the specific element only means when the plant is deficient to the phosphorus, 
then it can be corrected by applying the phosphorus. It is not like this that okay, the plant is deficient by the phosphorus and then you are supplying extra quantity of the nitrogen and saying that the deficiency will be alleviated. So that situation is not there, we have to understand, isn't it? Now the third thing comes that this element is directly involved in the nutrition of the plant and gradually we came to know one more uh, or we have devised one more criteria which indicate that uh, and the essentiality of this nutrient or any nutrient should be proved in all. Dear friends, uh, the first and foremost important thing which I would like you to remember is that the time is very powerful. Time is very powerful in the sense, in this picture you can make it out like this, that few years back when you are doing agricultural operation in the field, intercultural operation especially, what we used to do, we used to tie the mouth of animals so that it doesn't uh, feed on the growing crop. But the time is changed. In this 2020, instead of that uh, mask on the bullock, it has come to the human. Time has changed this, isn't it? And we have changed according to the time, that's why we are surviving. If we would have been element like this, that no, I will not put any mask on my mouth. Probably would, we would not have survived. Mask is very important in this time. Everybody is realizing this. So those people who have changed according to the time is only developing. But those people who have not changed according to time is not developing. They, that's why I have put here the slogan that the wise will rise. We have to remember this slogan here and then further you have to understand what we are going to do with the biofertilizers and what we have done so far in the agriculture, what best we can do in the agriculture. So dear friends, the first question comes after this is this, that can we make the nutrients? No. If you will ask me this question, can we make the nutrients? No. Human being has done so many things to have reached the marsh. But when it comes to the synthesization of the any nutrient, we are helpless. When we talk about the chemistry and periodic table in the chemistry, then we will come up from 1 to 95 elements. We have seen that these elements are naturally available. Few elements, a very few quantity we have synthesized and all those elements are the radioactive elements there. But the, all the essential nutrients are God gift, isn't it? So we cannot synthesize those essential nutrients. Then we have the one may ask the question that what we cannot synthesize. We are having so many industries, so many factories which are producing the urea, DAP, single superphosphate, urate of potash, etc., etc., etc. Dear friends, they are not synthesizing the nutrients. They are simply converting the form of the nutrient, like from one form to another form. So they are not synthesizing. Rather, they are transforming the one form to the another form of nutrient. God has created the nutrient, but God has played a trick. What the trick God has played? God said that if I will make the nutrients readily available for each and everybody, then it will be misused. So what God has done? That God has made this nutrient, but the God have made this nutrient and placed it in a different place and in the different form. So only those people who is having the intelligence or who is the wise will only will be in the position to utilize this. When we talk about the nitrogen, the first nutrient comes in agriculture is the nitrogen. And when we talk about the nitrogen, dear friends, nitrogen is available in the atmosphere but required by the soil. Isn't it? So to bring down the one inch nitrogen from the atmosphere to the soil is very difficult. When we talk about the phosphorus, phosphorus is readily available in the soil. But it is not available in the form which is required by the plant. And the third thing is the potash is the important element which is available, which is available in the soil, but it has not fully withered. So this is the problem with this uh, nutrients, dear friends. And to cope up with these nutrients, we have to use our wisdom or we have to use our knowledge. We have two choices with us. One is either we add these nutrients in the soil or the another thing is this, that we should manage these nutrients in the soil. But unfortunately, unfortunately, we are not a good manager. 
we are not a good manager so what we did we keep on adding the nutrient in the soil so what we are doing in the present agriculture we are bringing the chemical fertilizer from the market and we are keep on adding those chemical fertilizer in the market unfortunately we have reached to the position that we are we, we think and we started thinking in this way that if you will not add those chemical fertilizer after buying it from the market you will not get the harvest what we have planned for that isn't it so we have reached to that level because we forgot to manage the crop nutrients in the soil and then when we talk about the history like when the time of independence when we talk about then at the time of independence and before the green uh, revolution which took place in 1967 the consumption of different nutrients in india was less than 50 kg per hectare but now we have reached to the level where we are consuming around 165 uh, uh, kg nutrients per hectare gradually we have developed so many industries for the synthesization or uh, conversion of one form to another form of this nutrient i would like to use this word more precisely from the 1906 even well before the independence and up to 1968 when the green revolution was occurred in india we had so many industries developed here we are friends but what is happening of these nutrients i don't want to waste much time here in this what is happening to these nutrients in this but my concern here is this that this nutrient one we are applying in the soil whether it is the nitrogen whether it is the phosphorus or whether it is the potash this nutrient is not made available to the plant nitrogen everybody knows that it is highly soluble nutrient and it leaks out from the soil phosphorus everybody knows that phosphorus is having different uh, uh, properties as the different rhizome of the ph if the ph of the soil is low then it will fixed by the different cations say for example ferrous aluminum and manganese if the ph is high then it will be fixed by the calcium mainly and it is available for the plant or for the crop it is neutral ph around around 7 ph only is little lower to the 7 and little higher to the 7 the ph is higher than this same with the potash i don't want to put much stress on this and gradually we started as i said that we are not a good manager isn't it so we started adding so many nutrients in the agriculture when we talk about the statistics of the world that how much nutrient per hectare is added by the different crop then you will be surprised by looking at the singapore that it is adding more than 30237 gram nutrient uh, sorry kilogram nutrients per hectare in the soil so this is as equivalent to two truck of the nutrients per hectare they are adding into this but the scenario of the singapore is different they are having around 1000 hectare land only this is very small land and from this small land they are uh, producing too many things and there are so many things that we will not discuss but when we talk about the main agricultural country in say for example india the consumption of nutrient is 503 uh, kg whereas in india it is around 165 kg per hectare so at one side what is happening that the consumption of this chemical in the land is very less in the other countries which is producing higher or which is having higher productivity of this thing but even in this low use of the or less use of the chemicals also the india is facing so many problems of the soil sickness and the soil health problems as well as it is degrading the environment also rapidly so we have to devise an alternative so that we can save or protect our environment and dear friends for that the biofertilizer is there the kg patel sir has uh, explained it very well that's why i am not touching that part particularly there again but being a plant pathologist or being a microbiologist or being a man of biofertilizer particularly the problem which is being faced by us and the questions which are coming to us is that the human being farmers agricultural scientists or general entrepreneurs are so influenced by the use of this chemical that they always think that the chemical is the only thing which is sustaining the agriculture if you will not add the chemicals in the agriculture you will not be in the position to get the good harvest when we discuss about this the microbes are there they can do lot of jobs which you are 
this chemical or suppose to do they never used to believe but after this covid 19 pandemic everybody has realized that what the microbes can do here so dear friends now it becomes very easy for all the microbiologists and virologists particularly to explain the people that what the microbes can do here so and generally i discuss one very important aspect with my dear friends and all those people who discourage biofertilizers they say that what the microbes will do a very excellent experiment was done in the brazil i would like to discuss about the, the outcomes of that experiment if you see this slide which is displayed in everybody's monitor here that the sugarcane crop was planted by the brazil scientists in the soil without any nitrogenous fertilizer isn't it without any nitrogenous fertilizer when the sugarcane crop was planted the crop grew a little bit after that uh, nothing was there no nitrogen source from the other source was there means the plant was having like seed germination is taking place it was some sort of things like that but after that what the scientists did and that the scientists grow that sugarcane crop in which they added the radioactive labeled nitrogen i would like to stress this point again what they did they added the radioactive labeled nitrogen from the soil isn't it and everybody knows that the two third part of the atmosphere is a nitrogen gas isn't it so they added only the radioactive labeled nitrogen in the soil and they grow the plant and when they grow the plant the plant grow to the full height a full maturity in between they tested the presence of nitrogen in the plant and analyzed it how much nitrogen in the plant is labeled with the radioactive element and how much nitrogen is not labeled with the radioactive so they are surprised when they observe in the beginning of the or early stage of the development generally at the 3 month age then at a 3 month crop they observed that 40 percentage of the nitrogen 40 percentage of the nitrogen in the plant is labeled with the radio label isn't it but the 60 percentage is not radio label nitrogen in the plant that indicate very clearly that when the plant is taking nitrogen from the root it is taking 40 percentage of the its required nitrogen from the soil where is the remaining 60 percentage nitrogen is coming from the atmosphere and when this remaining 60 percentage nitrogen is coming from the atmosphere which is not very reliable means the microbes is playing a significant role or a biofertilizer is playing a significant role in fixing that atmospheric inert nitrogen into the form which is required by the plant and supplying to the plant when the same plant it was tested at the time of harvesting they surprised again that at the time of harvesting there was only 10 percentage nitrogen was labeled with the radioactive whereas the 90 percentage nitrogen was not labeled with the radioactive means nitrogen 90 percentage in the plant is coming from the atmosphere not from the soil dear friends we know about the sugarcane crop and the sugarcane crop is the crop of which ratoon is taken by the farmers in a which is a routine factory they kept it for the ratooning and the they observed that again when the ratoon is sprouting out where the crop is developing then they observed at the initial stage that the 70 percent is crop is uh, 70 percent is nitrogen available in the crop is radioactive whereas the 30 percent is the natural and when the same crop was mature and at the time of harvesting they observed that the 30 percent is nitrogen is radioactive whereas the 70 percent is nitrogen the ratoon is coming from the atmosphere this is very exhaustive very important very influencing very encouraging result that's why i am discussing with all of you so here it indicate that the contribution of the nitrogen which is being added from the soil is very less whereas the contribution of the nitrogen which is coming from the atmosphere is huge so this will encourage those people who are working on the biofertilizer and who, who are planning to work on the biofertilizer industries or in fact biofertilizer industries 
that people are little bit confused that's why they are adding too much nitrogen is fertilizer in the soil but basically a very little amount of the nitrogen is fertilizer is coming from the soil and the maximum amount of the nitrogen is fertilizer is coming from the atmosphere here we all know my dear friends that the sugarcane is a crop dr kg patel sir has explained it very well that the sugarcane is a crop where a estobacter bacterium which is now known as a glucomyestobacter uh, and glucomyestobacter is used as a biofertilizer which is associative symbiotic bacteria and since this is a associative symbiotic bacteria this bacteria remain in the cane developing cane very closely associated with the developing cane and fits the atmospheric nitrogen and provide it to the plant because of its associative symbiotic this bacteria is having high potential to provide the nitrogen to the sugarcane crop here one question can come to the in the mind of many audience that why there is a difference between the main crop and the rattum crop the difference between main crop and rattum crop is because of this that when the crop is harvested the upper part of the crop is harvested therefore it cannot synthesize any it cannot do any of the nitrogen fixations and the photosynthesis all the activities are stopped but at the same time roots are quite active when the roots are quite active then they keep on taking the nutrients that's why some difference is coming in this fox so dear friends this, through this slide i wanted to highlight the significance of biofertilizer and those people who discourage the use of biofertilizer should learn something about this after this we have to understand that okay if this is the importance of biofertilizer these are the biofertilizers that we should know about what is the definition of biofertilizer so we have to understand what is the definition of biofertilizer and what thing comes in the definition of biofertilizer this is required particularly to understand because people get confused with the biofertilizer and organic fertilizer so to differentiate these things the biofertilizer definition is required biofertilizer can be defined as a preparation containing living cells it is very important thing to note down here that the living cells or latent cells of the efficient strain of microorganism that help crop plants uptake the nutrients by their interaction in the rhizosphere they are applied to the seed or soil they accelerate certain microbial process in the soil which augment the extent of availability of the nutrients in the form is easily assimilated by the plants when you talk about the list of biofertilizer dr kg patel sir explained it in a very better way than what i am going to explain but just for the reminder that there are nitrogen fixers there are phosphor mobilizing there are potash mobilizing and there are some other nutrients providing or other nutrients mobilizing materials when you talk about the nitrogen fixers then the free living is the azotobacter which is most common used in most of the crop ecosystem when you talk about the symbiotic then the rhizobium which everybody knows what is the rhizobium so i did not discuss what is the rhizobium when it comes to the associative symbiotic associative symbiotic is the glucomyestobacter which i discussed in the time of explaining the sugarcane then the phosphor solubilizing again the phosphor solubilizing bacteria was explained by dr kg patel sir in a very nice way he showed the plate where the zone was seen so those are the phosphor solubilizing bacteria which is basically the bacillus negativum there are some fungi also which is from the panicillin and aspergillus group which can also Use this as a phosphor solubilizing. Similarly, phosphor solubilization and chem mobilization. Dear friends, generally there is a confusion between so many people in the uh, between the phosphor solubilizer and chem mobilizer. Actually, the phosphate is insolubilized by the presence of cations in the soil, isn't it? So phosphate is making covalent bond with the cations, say for example, calcium, aluminium, manganese, all these things, and become insoluble. So it here it requires the solubilizer but what is the situation with the potash that the potash is still not fully mineralized and is available in the absorption form or readily available form so we have to convert it from the unavailable form to the available form that's why generally this is known as the potash mobilizing bacteria and the vesicular uh, arbuscular mycorrhiza is also there so and generally known as the am fungi earlier it used to be known as the worm fungi vesicular arbuscular mycorrhiza which is also a very good uh, um, organism which can help you in getting this nutrients very well i don't want to discuss about the statistics because uh, 
in the sense sir has discussed this thing but we have to understand that the requirement of our nitrogen is a huge and against this the industries is providing a very little amount of the nitrogen dear friend the industries is producing around the 50 till this data may vary like 50 to 20 20 to 30 50 to 60 60 to 20 because every year the different type uh, different quantity of the nitrogen is produced on the basis of demand of the world so when we talk about the non biological nitrogen fixation about the 50 metric ton of the nitrogen is produced by the industries whereas the 20 nitrogen uh, a metric ton nitrogen is fixed by the conditions and the lightning which generally you are seeing in this rainy season is fixing around 10 metric ton of the nitrogen at the same time when we talk about the biological nitrogen fixation when we talk about the biological nitrogen fixation then it is coming from the agriculture land forest and the sea ecosystem also which is also contributing a huge amount of nitrogen which is around 175 metric ton so you can compare here that though we are producing nitrogen in the industries and supplying to the agriculture, but the quantum of nitrogen which is supplied to the agriculture is very less as compared to the industry. And one important thing here I would like to say about the legumes. Everybody knows about the legumes, that legumes are having the nodules of rhizobium, and these nodules of the rhizobiums are fixing atmospheric nitrogen and giving to the plant. So my Fellow friends of agronomy, when they are giving the fertilizer recommendations in the different crop, they give higher quantity of the nitrogen always as compared to the higher quantity of the phosphorus in other crop. But when it comes to the legumes, they give the lower quantity recommendation of the nitrogen than the phosphorus here. Yeah. The reason basically is that the rhizobium is there associated with this and it is fixing the uh, nitrogen. Dear friends, when we talk about the evolution of rhizobium and the legume crop, then the evolution of the rhizobium and legume crop took place together. That's why legumes are the crop because of the presence of rhizobium in its root could evolve to the maximum protein containing crop, isn't it? So association of the bacteria could make rhizobium rich in the protein. We everybody knows that the protein is made up of nitrogen. When you talk about uh, the importance of biofertilizer and use of the biofertilizer, we have discussed one aspect of this. But when we at the same time talk about the cost of one kilogram of the biofertilizer produced from the different sources, then dear friends, when we talk about the cost of bio, one kilogram of the biofertilizer produced from the different sources, then it is generally coming 4.5 rupees per kg when we are talking about the Biofertilizer in cereals is coming around 9.6 rupees per kg when it is coming in the sugar cane. When we talk about the urea, urea is having 46 percentage nitrogen. So by looking at the price of urea, everybody knows. And the 46 percentage accordingly, one kilogram nitrogen, we can calculate it is coming around 10 rupees, 85 pesa. At the same time, FYM is coming around 90 rupees. Because the price of FYM is day by day increasing raised number of the cattle are there in the agriculture system now and the FIM is containing less quantity of the nitrogen which is one or two percentage. After this I would like to discuss some myth and reality associated with the biofertilizers. These myth and reality associated of, with the biofertilizers are that the microbe, microbes have an insignificant role in the soil. Few people comment like this that what microbes will do they have an insignificant role in the soil. I have discussed these things by giving an example in the earlier, but here I would like to quote one thing that if your soil is having microbes, then only it is a soil, otherwise, it is a mud. If no microbes are there in your soil, then it is not a soil, it is a mud. It can be used for the pottery purpose, but it cannot be used for the agriculture purpose. This is the importance of the microorganisms. The other question comes and so many people ask that, okay, we are applying microbes in the soil. What will happen to this microbe? It requires the uh, congenial environmental conditions. We are having the uh, so many pesticides in the soil. Temperature is high. What will happen to the things? Whether it will die in the hostile environmental conditions or not? No, dear friends. Microbes are not going to die because of the hostile environmental conditions because we have to talk about the microclimate, isn't it? 
When we are standing below the tree, we are feeling some relief from the sun uh, scratching. But when we are standing uh, under the roof or other cemented materials, we are feeling that uh, heat. Why? Because the microclimate is different. The same thing is happening here in case of the soil. And dear friends, generally people say that, oh, it requires high moisture, all these questions are coming. If a plant is not dying, means the root is having sufficient moisture. And one more important point I would like to put in your consideration here in your mind, that dear friends, around 20% of the biomolecules synthesized by the plant of its total dry weight matter or the total volume is uh, released as a root exudates in the soil, isn't it? So if weight of your plant is a one kg, then 200 gram of the material is exudated through the roots. And when these exudates are coming through the roots in the soil environment, then it is creating some congenial environmental condition for the multiplication of the microorganisms. So it will not die. There are certain scientists or certain students or certain users say that the microbial microbes will die if they will be mixed with the chemicals. Dear friends, very specific chemicals are there to kill a very specific microorganism. If this microbe would die by using the urea or DAP or some other fertilizer, then there is no problem of the disease. There would not be a big hospitals. Isn't it? So dear friends, be confident that your microbes are not going to die by using of the chemical fertilizer. And everybody knows this, that the soil is having a very good buffering capacity. When I'm talking about the soil is having very good buffering capacity, then there we can talk about that, okay, that certain fertilizer is having the very different pH, so either acidic pH or alkaline pH, and in this acidic pH and alkaline pH, what will happen to the bacteria? But dear friends, when this fertilizer is going into the soil, then it is not going to change the pH of soil because of the high buffering capacity of the soil like this, isn't it? So nothing will happen to the uh, bacteria when they are being used with the chemicals, especially I'm talking about the fertilizer because this is the question generally asked to me by many of the farmers when they are coming to meet me and many of the scientists also are discussing this question to me. Sir, we cannot apply the biofertilizer immediately after the application of this or if I'm applying this biofertilizer, then I have to keep 15 days window towards the before the application of this and after the 50, 15 days window after the application of the uh, biofertilizer, no. Dear friends, it is not happening like this. Then when I'm saying too much thing about the biofertilizer, then the one question comes to me. These are the questions which generally farmers are coming with me. I'm just discussing with all of these questions with you. So, okay, then if you are saying that nothing is going to happen of, to these uh, microbes, then microbes, once you have added in the soil, will remain permanent in the soil. No, dear friends, no. You have to understand this very important uh, topic or this very important phenomena that what microbes are there in your soil or what microbes are there in the root zone depends upon the root exudates of the plant and organic matter of the plant. When the plant is surviving well, the plant is growing well, then it is secreting some root exudates, the biofertilizer or microbes which is responsible for the or which is used as a biofertilizer by using those microbes. Uh, sorry, this uh, exudates are multiplying here. But the moment they stopped getting the root exudate from the soil, what happens? Some opportunist microbes which is having higher rate of multiplication or is pretty multiplying in the soil is occupying that place. So dear friends, it is a seesaw. Like you can see here in this picture, it's a seesaw. One time what will happen? The important microorganism or useful microorganism will be more in the soil. At that time, what will happen? Microbes will be there, but those space will be occupied by the least useful microorganism. So what we have to do through the intercultural operation or by adding the different microbes, we have to sustain or retain the population of good microorganisms. That's why again and again in every crop season, we are asking them to add the different microorganisms required in this. Dear friends, 
The other question comes that when the microta has such a useful component and uh, such a good scope is there, uh, then why it is not being used extensively? There are certain issues of, of this. One is the quality related issues, another one is the storage related issues, and third one is the usage related issues. So, dear friends, what are the strategy? I am talking about those people who are really or very sincere or seriously thinking about to start the entrepreneurship or they want to come into the biofertilizer business. What are the point they use to, they need to be take care. I am going to discuss here with these things. That dear friends, if you are really talking or thinking about the establishment of the biofertilizer industry, then the first thing you have to take care is the selection of the good isolates. See, if you will not select a good team to play, your team is not going to win, isn't it? So here also the same thing is there, that the selection of the isolate is required. If you have selected the uh, incompetent isolate, then you would not be in the position to get the desired result. So selection of the isolate vary from place to place, crop to crop, and there are high level of variation is there in this. After the selection of the plates, you have to see whether that, that uh, isolate you have selected, which is good in the particular phenomena, can tolerate the high temperature and high salt conditions or not. Yes, you have to test it, dear friends, because your microbes are going to use in the different environmental conditions and the different soil conditions. So you have to test whether these microbes are compatible to use it or not. After that, you have to thoroughly identify and characterize that microorganism. Until or unless you will not thoroughly characterize that microorganism, this microorganism is not going to say to you. Once you have characterized this microorganism, then you have to see that in the different environmental conditions or in the different situations, how it is giving the results. And then only you have to prepare the product. Once you have prepared the product, then you have to test the product in the different conditions. For the preparation of this uh, product, dear friends, in these days, there are so many automatic instruments are available. So you need not to worry about this. But what the care you need to take is that you have to select the food material of those microbes, which we call it as a media. So you have to select the good media through the research and experimentations or through the literatures you can find out. Isn't it? So media, finding a media is not a good thing, but the preference of media for the different strain is different. That's why I'm not discussing here the exact composition of the media. So once you have to find out that what is the media of this, then the another important thing you need to take care is aseptic condition. Aseptic condition in the sense that when you are growing that microorganism, that microorganism only should grow. No other microorganism should come and contaminate that particular thing. The third question comes that when you have developed the product, then you should have a good facilities for the taking of this product because quality testing of this product and the taking of this product because the quality of the things which can put you in the winning condition. Once you have tested this, then you have to conduct demonstration in the field. Here what the missing people are doing that, okay, they are having everything very good, but the agriculture marketing is a different type of marketing. Many of us know because we are in the business of agriculture, but what we have to do, we have to test its efficiency and have to conduct a good demonstration. The another important point is the application of this microorganism uh, or the biofertilizer. So you need to take care of the application of this uh, biofertilizer, that how this biofertilizer is being applied to the field. Then you have to find out and put the demonstration in a good way by comparing the uh, uh, different um, uh, product, uh, if you are having a superior product with the recommended doses of the fertilizer and without fertilizer, then only you can explain people uh, that how best it is. We conducted so many experiments in this and through the basis of this experiment, dear friends, say for example, here you can see the sugarcane crop and here in this sugarcane crop, you can see the different level of uh, growth of this. It is just because of the biofertilizer. Dear friends, through the experimentation also, we can to know that uh, this biofertilizer, earlier I discussed in the case of sugarcane, the Brazil research, but through our research also in this Nausari Agriculture University, which Dr. K.G. Patel sir also has explained very well, that this biofertilizer is having 
potential to reduce the 50 percentage use of chemical fertilizer. 50 percentage is not a, a small quantity, my dear friends. Try 50 percentage is not a small quantity, my dear friends. Why I am saying? These are the different experiments we conducted, and through these experiments, we proved not only this. After that, we conducted so many demonstrations in the farmer field and proved these things. On the basis of this only, we are in the position to say that 50 percentage is, it can reduce. 50 percentage is not a small product, a small quantity, dear friends. What is the value of this 50 percentage? I will explain you later on. But before that, I would like to explain that so much innovation in the recent past that took place in the era of biofertilizers also. We are knowing about the IT revolution. Earlier, before 20 years or 15 years, we used to have a big telephone sitting near at a corner in our house and everybody used to look at that phone and then it used to ring. Everybody used to stop their work and used to see that, oh my God, somebody has called, we are receiving some phone, isn't it? But now the things has changed very well. Now the things has changed very well that everybody is having the mobile. Hey, this is a revolution in this IT sector. Similarly, dear friends, huge revolution took place in the use of chemicals and biofertilizers uh, and in the nutrients in the uh, plant, which we are not still fully aware about it. In Nausari Agriculture University, we started working on the biofertilizer uh, 10 to 12 years earlier, and we could reach to the position where we can transform the use of nutrients entirely. Here I would like to say in the words of our Honorable Prime Minister, when he was Chief Minister of our Gujarat State, that there was an era when fertilizer used to be there in the bullock cart. After that, the era came that the fertilizer was there in the 50 kg or 45 kg gunny bag. After that, there was an era when we were having the liquid biofertilizer, the fertilizer was there in the end. And now there is an era where you can keep the fertilizer in your pocket. So at that uh, time, when our uh, Honorable Narendra Modi ji was Chief Minister of this state, we coined a new term in the use of biofertilizer and fertilizers that khatar khisame, like fertilizer in the pocket. In Gujarati, it is known as a khatar khisame. You can keep the fertilizer in the field because what we did, it, dear friends, that we concentrated that materials to the level that it can be stored in a small capsules which can be held in the between two fingers. You can see the prime minister holding. And then he was chief minister holding that capsule in his hand. By looking at this, you can see the size of this. Isn't it, dear friends? So that revolution has took place in this. If you are aware about the recent technology, then all those people who wanted to uh, start the biofertilizer entrepreneurship can look even up to that stage. Still, nobody is or very few people are producing these materials here. So we uh, have discussed about the Khatar Kisame, it's a very visionary statement of our Honorable uh, Prime Minister when he was Honorable Chief Minister of the Gujarat State. So this is the huge scope biofertilizer is having, dear friends. I would like to summarize a very important, again, important part of this, that generally when we are discussing about this, that okay, then how to start this biofertilizer factory or production of this biofertilizer, then to those people, I would like to say that the biofertilizer and organic fertilizer is controlled by the FAO, Fertilizer Association of India, and the biofertilizer and organic fertilizer is coming in the fertilizer control order made by the government of India in 1985. In that, there was a provision earlier, please note it and uh, listen it carefully, that in that there was a provision of earlier to get the license for the production of biofertilizers, isn't it? But last three to four years, the system has changed and now you need not to get the license for the production of uh, biofertilizer, which earlier used to renewed every three years, but the now government has made, government of India has made the system in which you need to get NOC from the state government. NOC stands for the no objection certificate from the state government. And after getting that NOC from the state government, you can start production of the biofertilizers. But you have to take care of the quality parameters which has been standardized in the Fertilizer Control Act 1985 and its subsequent amendments. 
so we are binding with those specification which has been given in the fco then by getting this noc nutrient we start production of the biofertilizer this is the one part that the production of biofertilizer once you are producing the biofertilizer you have to sell this biofertilizer also so to sell this biofertilizer you need to procure a license for the selling of biofertilizer that is the marketing bio license that's the uh, district uh, extension officer is taking care of this you can go to his office and ask him to get the different requirements for the production uh, for the obtaining license for the selling it he will give you the different documents when we talk about gujarat state i know very well about the gujarat state that there is an online system even you need not to go there you have to go to the site of gujarat state and have to upload all the documents the license will come to you not only this you have to protect the brand name also and its trademark also isn't it because if the trademark logo is coming anywhere it is a winning point for all of us so dear friends navsari agriculture university chapter example is preparing biofertilizer in the name of norodi and for that we have obtained the trademark also so you can obtain the trademark under the trademark act 1999 isn't it i would like to complete it with the scope of this i put this slide at the last why i put this slide at the last because dr kg patel sir has discussed about the 5.08 lakh metric ton quantity that's why i thought that okay then sir has extensively explained about this i did not to put much weightage on this particular thing so i put this slide at the last now i just would like to say in the similar tune what dr kg patel sir has said here almost that the some data is very little bit because uh, different people take a different estimate for this but dear friends when we talk about the actual cultivated area of the gujarat then it is coming in 86 lakh hectare when we talk about the actual cultivation area of the country then it is coming into 1522 lakh hectare when we talk about the use of urea like conjunction of the nitrogenous chemical fertilizers then it was in 2018 it was around the 2410000 metric ton isn't it so when it was 2410000 metric ton was there so when we talk about as i discussed that we can save 50 percentage of the chemical fertilizer by using this biofertilizer okay you don't believe this you don't think that we can do in the beginning 50 percentage of course gradually we will come in the position where we will be in the position to reduce 50 percentage and 70 percentage chemical fertilizers also if the scenario will keep on continue in the positive way but in the initial for few years if you target it like this that instead of 50 percentage we will save the 10 percentage isn't it then what is going to come you can see here when you are showing only the one percentage here downside you can see that one percentage replacement and two percentage replacement and three percentage replacement also is stopped particularly isn't it then we have three elements nitrogen phosphorus and potash also i have calculated in my very least quantity after calculating in the least quantity also i reached around 4.5 metric ton of the biofertilizer when we talk about the one percentage only see when dr kg patel sir talk he talk about the lakh metric ton 5 lakh metric ton isn't it that indicates that the 5 lakh metric ton biofertilizer capacity is there here i'm talking even less than this isn't it i'm talking 4.52 metric ton only and against this 4.52 thousands metric ton dear friends when we discuss about we are not even producing 0.2 thousand metric ton biofertilizer when we are working in this uh, industries so this indicates that only one percentage chemical if you are going to reduce by use of the biofertilizer then how much scope this industries has got now it a question comes that okay i have got how to get the license i have got how to get the best best elements i have got idea about how to do the um, 
uh, research on this aspect, all these things I have got it. But what are the things I require for the production of biofertilizers or to get the license or lease or to run the industry? Then dear friends, I have listed here few things which is required to run a successful biofertilizer industries which require the fermenter. I have written here the capacity for fermenter of the 5000 liter. The quantity can be changed. That's why I have not given the cost here because when the quantity is changing based on the requirement and your budget, you can have 5000 liter capacity for, you can have even 200 liter capacity. That's why I have not given here the price. So you can start even with the one fermenter, then you need good water. So you need RO water purification system. You need bottling system. Everybody need bottling system. In South Gujarat, people when they are canning this uh, waters of mango farm, they are having bottling system. So different level of the bottling systems are there. You require the bottling system. You require an autoclave. You require a BOD incubator. You require hot air. You require a laminar air floor, pH meter, balance deep freeze to store different stuff, microscope, generator because power is very important things for the industries and different chemicals you are requiring. So by using 10 lakh rupees, you can start a good work if I have to discuss about the things required. If you want to go on the R&D side, then you require different instruments for the different purposes. So I have given the instrument required for the R&D side. And for the management side also, you require a CEO, you may yourself uh, be a CEO, after that you require a manager for the production, you require manager for the technical, after that you require technicians, after you that you require production assistant, you require purchase and finance side also because finance side should be very strong if you want to have a very successful venture, then you require a manager finance, you require assistant finance manager and dispatch is also very important things because once you have produced the materials and you have marketed in a very well uh, you have created the demand in the market very well. After that, you need to dispatch. So there should be somebody to take care of the dispatch. At the initial stage, one can do all the activities, but I'm talking about a well, good, good, well uh, furnished and uh, working uh, laboratory. That's why. And we should not forget that we require a person for the quality analysis, isn't it? So we should have a quality manager and technician with uh, all of us. Dear friends, with this, I would like to thanks here all of you for the patience hearing and complete my presentation part. You may ask the questions, but before you ask the question, I would like to quote a very important quotation of the Archimedes. Everybody knows Archimedes about and his strengthment of the Eureka. So dear friends, what Archimedes did, Archimedes made one lever, a very small instrument. It is not considered as an instrument in these days. Isn't it? I'm talking Archimedes. Archimedes was there in 287 to 212 years before Christ. So listen, isn't it? And he is made this small instrument. Then after that, when he was explaining the use of this instrument, then people started laughing at him that what you are talking, what is the use of this instrument? Isn't it? Then Archimedes said one encouraging sentence to all those negative thought uh, people that this instrument is of great use and if you will provide me a space to stand i can even lift the earth by using this instrument so his statement was this that give me a lever and place to stand i will move the earth dear friends biofertilizer is very important it is a, a breakthrough in the research of the nutrients it is having potential to not only take care of the nutrients, but also has a great potential to save our precious environment and ecosystem. And if it is being used, it can be a very remunerative business also for those people who are planning to start the biofertilizer industries. People are there to discourage you, but don't be discouraged. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Lalit. Now, now participants, participants are expected to uh, uh, raise your questions, so you may uh, chat. chat. Uh, you may put your question, your comment on chat box.
Any questions about participants? Sir, one, one uh, participant one, one appreciate your word. That is Khatar Kissa Ma. <laughs> thank you, thank you very much. Uh, how many people, people sir? I had a uh, nice lecture, a good presentation. There, there are some compliments for you, sir. Sir, uh, uh, Mr. Harinder Chawla mentioned that any uh, encouraging lectures you have provided detailed information. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, is there? Yes, yes, I am here. Dr. Didi Patel, sir. Uh, so, so uh, now I, I hope uh, there is no question for participants. I invite you to share or propose the word of thanks to Dr. Mahatma, sir. Before that, sir, I would like to thank all of you. You have done a very good uh, job in this COVID situation. I appreciate our uh, president of this session and respected KJ Patel, sir, uh, Dr. D.D. Patel, Dr. Tushar, Dr. Alok Sevasta, Dr. Jinjala, and all those. I don't remember the name of too many people. I'm sorry for that. I'm very poor in remembering this. Dr. Rajesh, Dr. Jaimin, Dr. Patak, and all those, my friends. Dr. J.J. Patel, thank you very much for a very nice seminar, sir. Indeed, it is very informative. I am also attending it. So thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, uh, doctor. Hello. Ha, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, yeah, sir. Sir. Mahatma Ji. Yo. You have done a very a nice presentation. You have covered in every aspect to go for entrepreneurship development, particularly for uh, production of the bio fertilizer and uh, for development. Hi, Hello? Hello, I'm audible, sir. Yeah, actually, uh, due to some internet uh, issues, uh, Dr. D.D. Patel will lose uh, the connectivity. However, uh, thank you, Mahatma, sir. Actually, you are covering each and every components that concern with the biofertilizer. You have started uh, your presentations with basic and and with the applied science. You have discussed about the essential criteria. You have talked about the microorganisms and what are the importance of microorganisms in agriculture. You, uh, uh, I, I will mention that you are uh, saying that we are not about that, but. Uh, uh, according to me, you are not a But now, setting you of your uh, presentations by considering the presentation given by the other speakers, uh, definitely we divert ourselves and become a good manager. Uh, so, thank you so much, sir, for delivering a nice presentation. Uh, the people and the participants of the professional, they are very much excited. And they are very happy with your presentation. Thank you so much, sir. I request to Dr. Maha. I am not getting your voice, sir. Yeah. Unfortunately, we are missing some internet issues, sir. 
Now, now I am audible, sir. Hello, Dr. Tusar Patel. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Yeah, you are audible, sir. Dr. Mahatma Ji. Ah, Dr. Mahatma Ji, please uh, 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 switch off your presentation. Yes, sir. Dr. Mahatma Ji. Yes, sir, I am doing it, sir. Doing it, sir. Thank you again. Thank you so much for sharing fruitful information, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. All the best, everyone. Thank you. You are welcome, sir. Uh, our next speaker is uh, Mr. Rajesh Kumar Dulubhai Patel. He is an innovative farmer from entrepreneurs. He belongs to he belongs to the Bharatpanya, the village of Dungri from Basan district. Now, uh, I just want to say some word about the Rajesh Dullabhai Patel. He is a farmer in the village of Dungri, so he is a farmer in the village of Dungri. So, he is a farmer in the village of Dungri. He is a farmer in the village of Dungri, so he is a farmer in the village of Dungri. जैसे भी हमारे यहाँ पे जो भी इंटरवेंटर्स हैं, उनको थोड़ा आपके साथ रूबरू किया जाए, ताकि क्या सक्सेस परसेंटेज है, एंटरप्राइज कैसे अपने आप में एक बढ़िया चीज है, वो अपने एक्सपीरियंस आपके साथ शेयर करें। तो मैं बात कर रहा था राजेश कुमार दुल्लबल पटेल, और तो उन्होंने अपने फार्म में � उन्होंने अपने जो फार्म पे वेस्टेज है उसको रिसाइकल करने के लिए वर्मी कंपोस्ट का पूरा यूनिट लगा के रखा हुआ है और वो वर्मी कंपोस्ट भी बना लेते हैं वर्मी पोस्ट भी बना लेते हैं उनके साथ उनकी अपनी खुद की नर्सरी है आप सब जानते हो कि दक्षिण चुगदात है वहाँ पे वर्टिकलचर व so, he has established himself well. I think he is one of the good entrepreneurs among the farmers. So, I would like to invite Mr. Rajesh Kumar to the back of the day. Rajesh, why? Are you showing here? Rajesh, why? Kindly share your screen. Can you share your screen? Yes, yes. Yes, yes. उटेश no problem. You can use it as a report. Okay. Okay, okay. Okay, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Rajesh Bhai, you can tell me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. My name is Rajesh Patel. I am from Valsa District. I am from Valsa District. I am from Valsa District. मैं वर वर्मी कंपोस्ट एग्रीकल्चर एग्रीकल्चर साइड में वर्मी कंपोस्ट और वेजिटेबल्स और मेरा छोटा सा नर्सरी भी है मैं अभी आज आपको वर्मी कंपोस्ट के बारे में थोड़ा बताऊंगा मैं वर्मी कंपोस्ट कहां से कैसे स्टार्ट किया उसके बारे में थोड़ा मैं बताता हूं पहला मैं मेरा इंट्रोडक्शन देता हूं मैं 
मैं मैकेनिकल इंजीनियर हूँ मैं पहले जॉब करता था मैंने बारह साल जॉब किया हुआ है मैं जब जॉब करता था तो एक बार मेरे को केंद्र है वहाँ जाने का सर आपको सुना दे रहा है तो मैंने वो कॉम्पिटिव कृषि विज्ञान केंद्र में देखा तो वहाँ वर्मी कम्पोस्ट बना रहे थे वहाँ ट्रेनिंग भी दे रहे थे तो मैंने वो देखा एक्चुअली मेरा पिताजी फार्मर ही है तो मैंने सोचा कि चलो हम लोग भी घर पे वर्मी कम्पोस्ट बनाएंगे और वर्मी कम्पोस्ट वहाँ बनाने के लिए वहाँ मैं सीख के आया तो घर पे पहले स्टार्ट किया दो ट्रैक्टर ट्रॉली हाथ ले आया और चालीस के जी फॉर्म ले आया वो वर्मी कॉम्पिटिव के वी के ने प्रोवाइड करवाया तो वहाँ से मैंने स्टार्ट किया घर पे घर और चालू करने के बाद घर के खेत में वो डालना चालू किया तो बहुत अच्छा रिजल्ट मिला तो बाद में मैं सोचा कि चलो हम लोग खुद ज्यादा बनाएंगे और हमारे खेत में जो यूज करेगा थोड़ा बेच भी देंगे तो मैंने वैसे करके थोड़ा पढ़ा पढ़ा दे गया धीरे 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 पढ़ा दे गया और मैंने पढ़ाया और पहले बेचने का तकलीफ भी हो रहा था अम्बेडी के वी के वाले ने मेरे को बेचने के लिए भी बहुत सारा सपोर्ट किया नवसारी एग्रीकल्चर वाले ने भी बहुत सपोर्ट किया बेचने के लिए तो धीरे 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 मैं बढ़ा दिया गया मैंने 2008 से चालू किया और 10 में मैंने जॉब भी छोड़ दिया 2010 में और इसके बाद मैं पूरा इसके ऊपर ही फोकसिंग करने लगा तो अभी मेरा पर मंथ 80 से 90 टन वो 16 से 1800 बैग 50 केजी का मैं बनाता हूँ और, और बेचता हूँ और साथ साथ में मैं और साथ साथ में वर्मी कल्चर वो वॉम भी मैं बेचता हूँ वॉम पर के जी ढाई सौ रुपया पर के जी के हिसाब से अभी बिकता है तो एक हजार के जी से बारह सौ पंद्रह सौ के जी तक मैं हर साल वम भी बेच देता हूँ वम आप सोचेंगे कि वम कहाँ बिकता होगा वम दूसरा वो जो फार्मर है जो वर्मी कम्पोस्ट बना है वो हमारे यहाँ से लेके जाता है अभी एक वो फिशिंग वाले फिशिंग वाले भी वर्म का बहुत बहुत ज्यादा उपयोग कर रहे हैं और एक्वायरम वाला और कछुआ पालन वाला वो सब वम लेके जाता और इसलिए वम भी बिकता है वर्मी कम्पोस्ट भी बिकता है वर्मी कम्पोस्ट जब मैंने स्टार्ट किया था तब मैं टू टू रुपीज पर के जी के हिसाब से बिकता था और वो भी बहुत तकलीफ होता था बेचने के लिए आज मैं नाइन अस्सी से नाइन्टी टन हर मंथ बनाता हूँ फिर भी बिक ही जाता है उसमें कुछ अभी मैं पाँच रुपये पर के के हिसाब से बिकता हूँ वर्मी कम्पोस्ट तो भी इजिली मेरा बिक जाता है अभी मैं एक बताता हूँ कि वो जो अपना जो गोबर रहता है वो अस्सी रुपये अस्सी पैसे Uh, sorry for interruptions. We will revert back shortly.
Rajula uh, might have facing some issues related to internet connectivity. So kindly bear with us. Your active participation is very much important. Again, we are very grateful for introductions. Actually, uh, Mr. Rajabai Dullabhar Bajaji belongs to Vansada District and come from the remote area. So frequently, they are facing the issues of the internet connectivity. Kindly request all the participants to bear with us. We will try to reconnect us. You might have understood. Uh, a chemical engineer left that job and joined uh, an entrepreneurship in agriculture. It's a huge achievement for any people. And of course, we are going to agriculture. So, success story really, uh, it's a great success story to know by my people. So, kindly bear with us and appreciate the effort made by Mr. Raju Bhai. Hello.
These are some of the glimpses of the Rajubai farm. The brand name of the Rajubai farm, what the product they have sell. It may be a barley wash, it may be a barley uh, one share of, or it may be a one compound. They have also involved in selling of the different seedling of the vegetables and fruits. These are some of the glimpses related to what the technology, how the bear is prepared, and what types of ingredients used by the Rajuai. You might have observed that what, uh, they, uh, they, they, are, they are using the land in between the already established plantation, that is, I think that the plantation is a bamboo plantation. As I say, so they have they have used... Hello. Ha, aap, aap ka ha ja hai. Hello. Ha, Raju bhai, aap, 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 aap. हम लोग गर्मी बेड़ ऐसे बना रहे हैं और ये वॉम रहता है और जैसे वो हम लोग 45 डेज रखते हैं 45 डेज ऊपर ऊपर का लेयर कवर करके रखते हैं और उसके ऊपर पानी का स्प्रे करते रहते हैं तो 45 डेज के बाद ऊपर से ऐसे हाथ मार के वो पंजे से हाथ मार के निकालते हैं वो तैयार किया हुआ ऐसे ऊपर के छत के ऊपर से लेते हैं और इसको बाद में बाद में हम लोगों ने उसको चाहते हैं ऐसे और जो तैयार एकदम पे 100% तैयार रहता है वो नीचे गिर जाता है और वेस्ट साइड पर गिर जाता है ये तैयार तैयार हुआ वर्मी कंपोस्ट है और इसको हम लोग 50 केजी के बैग में भर के उसको हम लोग ऐसे बैग भर के बाद में सेल करते हैं अब वर्मी वॉश भी बनाने का चालू है अभी हम लोग सेल नहीं कर रहे हैं अभी हम लोग हमारे खुद के फार्म में यूज करके उसका रिजल्ट देख रहे हैं इसके बाद में हम लोग उसको भी बेचना चालू कर देंगे वेस्ट ट्रेनिंग लेके गए और उसको उसने खुद खुद बनाना चालू भी कर दिया है लगभग मेरी डिस्ट्रिक्ट के आजू-बाजू 15 यूनिट बड़ा पर 15 यूनिट चालू कर दिया है सब लोग सब फार्मर पहला फार्मर लोगों ने चालू किया और खुद का फार्म में भी वो लोग वर्मी कंपोस्ट का यूज करना बहुत ज्यादा चालू कर दिया है ये फार्मर जो आते हैं विजिट के लिए उसको मैं दिखाता हूं थैंक यू Thank you very much, Raju Bhai. Aapka bahut Hello? Hello? Ah, sir, bolye. Bolye, sir. हेलो बोलिए सर राजू भाई हां बोलिए सर बोलिए हां आपका बहुत-बहुत शुक्रिया बहुत आपने बहुत ही अच्छी इंफॉर्मेशन दी आ, वैसे अभी जो हर एक एग्रीकल्चर ग्रेजुएट होने जा रहा है स्टूडेंट्स अभी जो पढ़ रहे हैं हमारे कॉलेज में आ, उनके लिए भी आपने जो कहा वो उनको इंस्पिरेशन देता है और हम लोगों को भी अच्छा लगता है ऐसे फैकल्टी मेंबर्स ऑफ नवसारी एग्रीकल्चर यूनिवर्सिटी कि आपने जैसी आपको इनफॉरमेशन मिलती है कृषि यूनिवर्सिटी के तरफ से और जो उसका आपने सही तरीके से आपने फार्म पे इंप्लीमेंटेशन किया और इंप्लीमेंटेशन करने के बाद कैसा रिजल्ट आ सकता है वो आपने सबको बताया तो आप 
इस वेबिनार में ज्वाइन हुए इसलिए आपका तह दिल से आपका मैं यूनिवर्सिटी की ओर से आपका आभारी हूँ सर सर स्टूडेंट को मेरे इतना ही कहना है कि आपको जॉब मिल जाए अरे वो तो है सर शायद जॉब नहीं है तो ऐसे आप पर भी कम नर्सरी नर्सरी डेरी फॉर्म ऐसे कुछ भी सकते हैं मैं जॉब करता था फिर भी जॉब के आज वरुण बोस का बहुत याद कर रहा हूँ नब्बे टन जितना रहन मैं बना के भी बेच रहा हूँ वर्मी वम भी बेच रहा हूँ अभी वर्मी ऐसे आप लोग जॉब नहीं मिली तब भी डरने का नहीं कुछ भी आप लोग कर सके वर्मी कम्पोस्ट में ओबीसी को भी वर्मी कम्पोस्ट के में जानना हो और लाल में बनाने का और मेरा आ सकता है मेरा नंबर तो आपके पास ही सर तो ओके ओके को इतना लाना चाहता हूँ आप लोग कुछ भी करते हो आप, आप लोग पढ़े लिखे हो और लिखने के बाद लोग कुछ भी कुछ भी और पढ़ा लिखा करेंगे तो उसका बहुत बहुत इफेक्ट अलग अलग ही इफेक्ट आ है सही बात है आ, आप हमारे लिए स्टूडेंट्स के लिए एक इंस्पिरेशन पर्सनालिटी है आप इंस्पायर करते हो सो so, आप आ, का बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद राजू भाई थैंक्स नवसारी एग्रीकल्चर यूनिवर्सिटी और आप जरूर हमारे यहाँ आते रहिए और हमारे स्टूडेंट्स को भी ऐसे इंस्पायर करते रहिए थैंक्स अलॉट राजू भाई नाउ प्लेटफॉर्म इज ओवर टू तुषार पटेल थैंक यू वेरी मच मेरे को भी आज ये सब इतना बड़ा प्लेटफॉर्म पे मेरे को बोलने का मौका दिया इसके लिए बहुत 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 मेरा दिल से थैंक यू बोल रहा हूँ ओके ओके थैंक यू राजू भाई डॉक्टर तुषार पटेल इट्स रियली इंस्पिरेशनल स्टोरी फॉर ऑल ऑफ़ अस मैकेनिकल इंजीनियर हाउ नवसारी He uh, total eight student completed his master uh, in his guidance century. Eight student also completed by Dr. Mingal Chandil sir. Uh, presently, uh, he is looking after to uh, make important Osaka Agricultural University project as a principal investigator. He published more than twenty five research papers across the globe, including international as well as national journal. Uh, he is uh, actively. in war in organizing of the 10 national street level seminar he is a member of two most prestigious scientific body uh, this is all about uh, dr m internal sir uh, welcome sir and now you can share your screen and start your presentation within second tandel Maybe join us within few seconds. So please be with us. Dr. Alok Sri Vasava sir is requested to make a post to Dr. Minal Tandil sir. Thank <laughs> you. 
okay being an entrepreneur or entrepreneur should be open minded he has to accept all the ideas then flexible okay so uh, so that's why i'm i'm telling you that we we don't have to restrict ourselves within one or uh, raising of one or two three species uh, seedlings okay we have to provide we have to provide uh, five ten three species that is generally de uh, demand that is generally in demand okay so it should be uh, our entrepreneur or business should be flexible then know your product okay the things or the products that we are providing to the farmers should be uh, genuine okay see uh, there are lots of uh, uh, private companies coming into the market and they are uh, selling okay, this uh, these are the tissue culture plants but some of the time that that may not be so for that point of view the plants should be genuine okay we are uh, the things which we are pro uh, providing to the farmer should be genuine and by this way only we get the positive response from the farmers okay if you want to run a, uh, run our industry on a long time period then our product should be genuine and then imp uh, importance of entrepreneurship see this, uh, this see friends these are the basic criteria okay so uh, what by entrepreneurship what we are doing we are just uh, providing employment we are creating employment opportunities and generally see this nursery business starts from the rural area so generally we are increasing employment opportunity to the weaker section of the society okay so uh, by this process generally we are also increasing the standard of living okay as we are providing employment opportunity to them so it, their standards is increasing their impact on society and development activity community development ultimately we are doing so uh, it will also support uh, some of the research and development activity particularly if we are doing uh, if we are going for tissue culture with us so it should it should have a strong database then and only then we can provide support research okay uh, if we have a standard protocol then and only then we can go for tissue culture business so that's why we required our entrepreneurships should have the uh, supports the research and development activity also now uh, my topic okay uh, this is uh, apart from forestry and enter, uh, entrepreneurships uh, small scale forestry enterprises in india so these are this is the list okay these are this is the list of small scale industries that is already we are having in our country okay uh, particularly in this sides nursery business they have not included but from my perspective nursery business is growing industry in today's scenario okay so these are the small scale industries list so milling is there we are all aware about uh, so milling then matchstick industry we uh, we have a very good industry wood panel based industry wood working industry sports goods industry see friends uh, for this particular industries they require different woods okay for timber purpose they require stick they requires mahogany so it, it, and this requirement of the wood is generally based on the area okay for sports goods they requires willow english willow salis r r willow indian willow okay so this for particularly preparation of the bats okay cricket bats stumps and then uh, also uh, the hockey sticks like this uh, friends we are also having pencil industry uh, few few of the times uh, uh, paper pencils are also available in the market they are preparing uh, this uh, pencils from the paper of raw or very uh, low quality paper so it is also a very new innovative okay pencil uh, that is prepared from the paper and then wood carving and pulp and paper industry see see friends these are the list of small scale but it requires a very high investment okay i have few examples jk paper mill limited okay lots of plywood industries in north gujarat so these are the various industries but for that you require lots of investment and another uh, another side non timber forest products okay particularly this these are the non timber forest products and it, you can start okay in this particular programs or for, for in this particular enterprises you require low investments okay particularly bd country cigarette okay it is prepared from the tendu leaves so you can simply go for uh, this that industry also katha and kutch extraction of the katha and kutch from the acacia catechu okay heartwood of the acacia catechu it is also very good industry you can also go for that lack cultivation of lack as we all are aware that the, this lack is required in uh, government uh, for sealing of these uh, documents confidential documents then bamboo today's uh, scenario bamboo is uh, developing very fast 
okay so you can prepare you can purchase uh, uh, raw material from the market and you can prepare the bamboo articles it is uh, it, it is in high demand you can prepare anything from the bamboo okay lots of things you can prepare from the bamboo so bamboo is uh, bamboo and bamboo with products is uh, nowadays is also one of the big enterprises then broom making uh, at lower level you can also start with uh, making of brooms essential oils in present scenario as we all are aware of that uh, giloy and another products so we can extract the oils and we can prepare the products and it, it is easily absorbs into the market there is no issue in relation to marketing resins is there herbal medicines again are there then farm based uh, production enterprises and plantation companies see friends uh, apart from all uh, this whole list okay i am going to present uh, another new aspects and that is the nursery okay and uh, we all are aware that the nursery is a place where plants are eventually raised for uh, eventual planting out okay so nursery uh, nursery business is growing or increasing demand for forestry seedlings uh, more particularly social and agroforestry programs in both uh, urban and rural areas uh, and another uh, another reason behind increase in plantation particularly plantation forestry or uh, large scale plantations is due to the it is it is becoming fa very famous into the farmers uh, perspective why because low ability of the labor see uh, my friends uh, uh, nowadays the farmers are facing a very big issue and that is the availability of the labor and hence the big farmers are uh, moving towards or they are shifting towards the plantation of the tree crops and that is known as plantation forestry so uh, here uh, our role is that what uh, being uh, being a producer or be, being a raised uh, uh, established nursery okay a for, uh, from a very small scale seedling based nursery to a very high tech tissue culture based nursery we can supply the planting material to the farmers and here see uh, majority of the farmers okay majority of the farmers uh, are not having a proper knowledge of this new species okay because see this uh, this plantation companies uh, come to gujarat and they have uh, distributed the planting material okay that is new to uh, all for the farmers for point of view as well as for the scientist point of view okay so uh, they have a skill to attract the farmers so dear friends uh, just like that uh, you also have to try your best to develop that skill marketing skill if you have marketing skill and in this digital era see uh, my friends uh, in this digital era this this world is very small place okay you can do any business you can do any business anywhere in any shape so uh, this uh, agroforestry social forestry and domain land plantation etc are heavy demand is observed during monsoon season see this all plants okay uh, care should be taken this all the plant material are generally demand in high demand during the monsoon season so we have to try our best to produce the seedlings or even clonal planting material or tissue culture raised planting material in on the onset of monsoon so this is uh, this is uh, again a very big business friends so nursery seedlings become the practical material for plantations because see uh, if you do plantation from seedling seeds okay uh, then uh, there is a very uh, as uh, if we took a germination percentage of 50 percentage then there is, it is a very less chance okay and natural regeneration is another option but it is not uh, practiced particularly in case of plantation forestry okay so uh, again there a plantation from seeds okay already established seedlings is a better option to increase the success so uh, dear friends i have di uh, divided uh, uh, this nursery actually nursery is divided on so many scales but i have divided nursery on the basis of its investment and its scale of management uh, into two parts small scale nursery and large scale nursery so small scale nursery are uh, uh, nursery is generally managed uh, or it is uh, i have categorized as a seedling based nursery seed or seedling based nursery with low investment okay if you uh, if you have uh, limitations of investment then you can first you can go for small scale industry that is seedling based nursery and then after earning you can shift your business to a large scale industry uh, the last day i put a, a, a high tech nursery or clonal nursery or tissue culture based nursery into the category of large scale nursery so uh, my friends you can go or you can move for uh, this nursery 
so uh, these are the basic requirements for the nursery uh, the nursery where we are uh, establishing a location or site should be accessible okay as we all are know that uh, in this uh, era it should be displayed well it, it should be displayed on website also as well as it should be displayed on road also so it means it it should have a well accessible facility for uh, for uh, transportation perspective also so uh, again staff if you are if you are going for high tech nursery okay or clonal nursery then skill and unskill labors are also very semi skill uh, skill and semi skill labors or uh, are, are also very important so this uh, ability of staff then topography particularly in case of high rainfall area you have to be very careful about selecting see um, a few days back i have read one of my friend he is doing a uh, doctor uh, Uh, his father was veteran, and he is my one of my best friend. He is a uh, alumni of uh, Aspi College of Horticulture and Forestry, and he has prepared a very good uh, nursery of cactus. And it is totally, uh, totally eroded in this uh, high rainfall uh, in this current year. So this uh, topography, the things uh, you should be very careful while whenever you are selecting. Then soil. Uh, particularly the uh, nursery for nursery a depth of 3 to 4 feet is essential the soil uh, which we are selecting should be having a neutral ph from 6.5 to 7.5 okay drainage okay if we are uh, the uh, the soil is red soil then it it have a good uh, drainage okay drainage is also uh, also important for nursery uh, perspective then vegetation see uh, dear friends i advise if you are uh, not having a, a high investment okay then if if it has a few scattered trees okay in a nursery then that act as a natural net house okay that will be uh, very because majority of our uh, our nursery uh, 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 these operations are carried out in the month of march april and may okay so at that time uh, it is very hot so particularly if you, if you have few scattered trees on your site then it is advisable to keep it because that particularly act as a net house so facilities facilities in terms of electrification facilities okay particularly if you are going for a high tech nursery then it should have electric facilities water facilities definitely will be required for nursery with a good quality irrigation water then ability of the labor it is must for any entrepreneur or entrepreneurships okay or for any enterprise it is very important then planting material okay uh, it comes into the next slides what are the different types of planting materials then propagation material in case of propagation materials seeds seed is uh, if if we are going for seedling based nursery then seed is very important and in case of uh, seed generally we are depending on the suppliers okay because uh, we we cannot collect the seeds that is uh, this tree species uh, that is uh, in high demand particularly red sanders this this white sandal mahogany so we are totally depend because this uh, tree species uh, are generally its natural provenances in the case of south india so we are totally depends upon the seed suppliers so the seeds uh, that we are getting okay it should be genuine okay so uh, for that we require genuine seed suppliers and in case of uh, this tissue culture based uh, and uh, for uh, uh, clonal based nursery we required mother bed okay their mother bed that is having uh, that is we can prepared in poly house having a technology of japanese technology that is filled with the sand and some amount of the soil okay uh, later on i will show you the pictures of the mother bed okay and then various nursery equipments okay definitely if we are going for any business they, we should have this facility at our farms okay so uh, uh, this these are the planting materials that we required at our site it is uh, see uh, that is this price okay white sand is available at the rate of rupees 700 per ton black sand uh, at the same rate red soil 500 and here i had uh, i have uh, converted that uh, price per kg okay uh, because uh, i i have prepared one uh, economics economics on the basis of per plant how much uh, we required uh, planting material then bags on the basis of that i, I have prepared one uh, see uh, dear friends this uh, these things uh, i have included here ga3 and ibri for clonal nurseries okay for clonal nurseries and one of the seed treatment ga3 is required okay particularly this uh, prominent new tree species okay and then vermiculite and cocopeat again for clonal nursery 
so these are the various planting material and its cost okay uh, ha huh. as uh, this seeds are also very important as i, I have already uh, told you that uh, this uh, seed we required or seed the planting material is generally we have to uh, occupied from the genuine suppliers so uh, seeds uh, see earlier uh, dear friends uh, you, you don't believe that uh, the white sandal seedlings before uh, 10 years ago the wild uh, wild uh, sandal or sandalwood seedlings are available in the market at the rate of 58 rupees 55 rupees per seedling okay but due to this uh, invention of the this uh, seed treatment okay earlier it was not known to us so uh, in our university and so many uh, other agriculture universities and forestry universities they have tried and now we have standardized uh, the seed treatments for red sandal and sandalwood okay uh, seeds for both both the seeds were soaked in 500 ppm d3 solutions for 24 hours and hence this is germination percentage so earlier earlier this uh, this seed treatment okay and the ability of the seed uh, is uh, limit uh, is a limitations for us okay nowadays uh, we have seed suppliers we have standardized this seed treatment okay only care should be taken that uh, this uh, red sandal and wild uh, wild sandal or sandal wood uh, we have to prepare a one sand bed okay one uh, shared bed and by generally line sowing uh, this treated seed we have to show into the this sand bed totally it is a white sand bed sand bed okay generally we have to sow by line sowing the seeds okay and we have to regularly water uh, for 10 to 15 days after 7 days inwards its germination starts when it reaches reaches to two leaf stage then we can uh, easily transplant it into the polythene bags okay so this way uh, for mahogany also uh, we have standardized cold water for 24 hours is enough to enhance its germination percentage similarly for shevan and milia okay this milia is uh, again uh, a high demand tree species amongst the farmers teak okay for teak uh, generally uh, it requires 7 to 8 treatments but out of that okay uh, generally we also have standardized and forest department is also agree with that okay this alternate wetting and drying okay so what we have to do actually 7 to 8 treatments uh, are available for the teak but uh, out of that this alternate wetting and drying alternate wetting includes a uh, 24 hours a period of uh, uh, shocking in water and drying on floor for 24 hours so it is alternate wetting and drying okay 24 hours wetting period 24 hours dry period so see a uh, simple this process we have to carry out for 7 to 8 times to re, uh, to uh, soften its hard sheet coat once the uh, hard coat uh, uh, this uh, hard seed seed uh, fruit okay actually it is known as droop teak droops are very hard so it softens it and it is uh, it becomes soften and that in, in enhance its germination percentage one another treatment is also for the department and we are also practicing or we are trying to de- developing this technology and that is the powdered slurry treatment okay so uh, we are also working on it uh, now uh, to uh, taking into consideration uh, this cost of seed okay uh, these are the different uh, economically important tree species okay that is uh, very high in demand amongst the farmers of uh, not uh, not only south gujarat but all over gujarat okay this red sandal wild sandal mahogany shevan teak and milia these are in high demand okay so price of the seeds per kg is here okay it starts from 250 to 750 rupees per kg uh, then uh, its uh, seeds per 100 kg okay uh, for 100 gram okay how many seeds is contained for 100 gram so uh, red sandal is having 110 seeds per 100 gram white sandal is having 700 to 1000 uh, seeds per 100 gram mahogany 215 seeds per 100 gram likewise same on one ticket milia so uh, germination percentage i also uh, taken into consideration the germination percentage okay for deciding the cost of the seed so generally uh, normally okay uh, it is having this red sandal and white sandal having if we treated okay treated seeds i am talking about the treated seeds and it gives germination percentage up to uh, 50 70 
okay so this is this this is the range of germination percentage so by taking into consideration all the conversion factors so ultimate cost of uh, seeds okay or ultimate cost of seed per seed is just like 0.40 paisa 0.16 paisa 0.30 paisa okay and so on so uh, idea behind uh, calculate uh, total cost total cost per plant okay how uh, so uh, it gives us basic idea what we are investing okay so for this purpose uh, this first column first column uh, includes cost of polythene bags as well as uh, media okay and here, here in case of media what we are i mean we are having a mixture of soils and nfm at the ratio of 2 is to 1 is to 1 okay so if you simply convert that uh, and polythene bags are available in the market at the rate of 130 uh, 160 uh, 140 rupees per kg in the market and it is having 130 120 polythene bags of size of 6 by 8 inches okay i am talking about a very big size for polythene bags okay so this way this is the polythene bag cost uh, along with media and its filling charges okay and generally labors fill uh, 300 to 400 bags per day so by converting by converting all the factors uh, i have decided this is the price okay which uh, which we required for polythene bag per per plant okay and seed cost that uh, what we have previously uh, pre- in previous slides we have decided this is the cost okay then labor cost okay labor cost for the throughout of the period okay and that includes its weeding okay and it also includes the spraying of insecticide and pesticides in in case of any insect or pest or any disease occurs okay and um, and uh, another operations uh, for example watering of plants watering the plants generally uh, in case of winter season one uh, watering per day is uh, sufficient and in case of uh, high temperature particularly in uh, summer season uh, so two watering per day are recommended okay so other cost uh, includes its uh, cost behind uh, management okay particularly insect pest cost or any other cost that is included so uh, my uh, dear friends uh, idea behind showing total pl- uh, total cost rupees per plant this is the maximum investment we have to do to produce a one plant okay each and everything see uh, see uh, my friends uh, this uh, red sanders and sandalwood earlier it was uh, it was available in the market at a rate of 50 to 60 rupees per seedling they are charging this much amount this plantation co- companies are charging uh, yes it, it, it includes uh, transportation charges that is the major factor but no doubt uh, it is uh, uh, although it is very high cost okay. and presently it is available at the rate of 20 to 25 rupees per seedling into the market okay uh, see uh, one of the example uh, of teak okay tissue culture teak uh, that is a uh, selling by the seeds of plant biotech okay they are charging uh, if you are, if you are purchasing on 10 numbers they are charging 70 rupees per seedling if you are purchasing more than 100 then they are charging 52 rupees per plants so dear friends there is a very uh, very big scope of nursery industry or entrepreneurships in our region okay yes this is also another uh, another uh, option by which also you can earn um, a handsome amount okay tall plant nursery see uh, dear friends uh, idea behind showing this screen shot you see this uh, this is the way by we we have to display our uh, products okay if you have a tall plants okay particularly this uh, builders uh, lobby okay when we are uh, they are developing any sites then at that time uh, they are creating uh, uh, they are supplying these tall plants nurseries okay here a few examples are given the uh, silver rock rudraksha pipal see this tall plants nursery uh, see the tall plants they are supplying to the uh, architectures to create their uh, aesthetic view of the any uh, any new sites okay so this is common things uh, you might have observed these things uh, in uh, uh, practical exposure see look at the height okay look at the height of the plant okay here also so tall supply of tall plant nursery or tall plant seedlings is again a very good business but for that again you required okay a big polythene size 
polythene size uh, you have to kept very big and again uh, that should be prepared from the virgin plastic okay so it should not decompose uh, in uh, in very uh, rapid time you don't have to change this polythene bags rapidly so this way uh, you can also supply the tall seedlings and in our, our region uh, very 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 uh, big nurseries are doing same business okay and similarly uh, similarly you also have experienced these things uh, whenever you are going to purchase tall plants from any nursery it cost is very high okay because it it requires uh, some management and uh, some another investment so they are charging so you can also uh, start up this business see uh, again uh, this is the list of the various plants uh, that this particular nursery man is selling on uh, websites again okay uh, dear friends uh, this is the price okay again see look at the price on an average it is having 300 to 400 rupees per plant for these avenue plants okay and for this uh, uh, again some of the another horticulture plants if you are going for uh, grafting of mango and any other things then also it charges very high okay so uh, that is in relation to horticulture uh, horticulture also they are selling uh, various grafts according to its size and age okay so uh, yes uh, for clonal nursery we required uh, mist chamber okay uh, 100 square meter cost is 9.65 lakh rupees poly house uh, cost about 115 and net house cost about 1 lakh rupees so uh, if you have uh, uh, if you have capacity to invest uh, the, uh, then you can you can also go for high tech nursery or clonal nursery okay so here uh, what things or what structures you require to produce clonal plants so uh, as i have earlier explained you japanese technology bed raised bed or sand bed okay from which uh, you have to grow your mother bed or you have to prepare your mother bed so you don't have to go frequently outside to collect the planting material okay particularly in case of eucalyptus there are so many clones are available in the market in our university we also have collected 20 clones of eucalyptus okay and they are also performing very well so uh, so these things uh, this way you have to prepare the mother bed okay so mother bed from that you can collect the planting material here in this slides you can see then immediately it is uh, generally we have to put into the water tank and uh, giving a treatment of barley okay and see this uh, labor, labor no not we cannot say labor but it is a skill labor they are preparing the cuttings of various sizes okay this is the row shoot and they are preparing the cuttings of these sizes okay uh, uh, soft wood then uh, semi hard wood and hard wood. not hard wood but soft wood cuttings they are generally preparing from the tips okay growing tips see uh, this uh, then you have to put this uh, in root trainers and see this lady is preparing uh, this root trainers with a mixtures of cocopeat and vermiculite okay the 40 cells i think i hope it is a 40 cells uh, uh, root trainer so simply uh, this uh, cutting okay ha huh, the uh, unique things behind this this uh, people are not declaring the trick okay so what is the ratio of this uh, growth regulators generally they are mixing the growth regulators with talcum powder to increase uh, its rooting percentage okay so being a entrepreneur first you have to uh, standardize okay yeah, uh, how much quantity of this iba you required to produce good amount of rooting okay so uh, this way so these plants first you have to put into the mist chambers then into the poly house then into the net house net house and then into the open condition so this way uh, uh, you you required such of the things okay so this way it is a complete flow chart okay from media preparation to media filling then selection of the uh, plant then uh, preparation of the cuttings and then uh, it is steeped into the barbistin solution then into the uh, vermiculite and cocopeat ready uh, ready root trainers then it should be uh, prepared cuttings should be put into the root trainers and then it should be put into the mish house 
okay miss chamber and then miss chamber to net house okay and then net house to open condition see this is the high tech nursery it is located at uh, sadakwar it is a high tech nursery of forest department they are supplying uh, clonal material of eucalyptus as well as casuarina okay so this way uh, uh, you can also start uh, from uh, if you have some investment policies then you can uh, supply the planting material to the large scale okay uh, so another aspect is tissue culture my dear friends tissue culture is again a very big industry and by the name of tissue culture uh, lots of people are uh, earning uh, huge amounts okay but for that you required uh, a very good invest investors okay if you have a in, uh, investment capacity then you can go for the tissue culture plants here i have put few examples uh, of the tissue culture plants that is in high demand okay people are searching for the tissue culture teak why tissue culture teaks because it see here uh, this uh, how they are collecting so uh, from the field they are generally selecting the superior clones here okay the clone is selected then they are getting or collecting the young branches and shoots and then into the lab they are doing in vitro culture okay and then uh, multiplication of shoots and then uh, rooting and then these plants are ready and hardening okay and hardening plants they have planted into the field and look at the uh, look at the uh, straightness of the ball okay here in case of any timber tree species the straightness of the tree or main stem is very important okay so uh, this is the main criteria and uh, there are lots of criteria be, uh, for uh, timber production it should be not free straight uh, straight ball okay uh, so this uh, look at the straightness of the ball okay so here uh, they are uh, uh, very very good exposure if you have uh, investors then you can also go for tissue culture based industry another example is here of red sander okay so this uh, by callus culturing okay they are producing this uh, 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 tissue culture plants of the sandal, uh, sandalwood then here uh, again red sander okay tissue culture plants of the red sander uh, shoot collection is there then shoot multiplication then in individual separate the shoots they are they are establishing then they are rooting and they are uh, produce this much roots and they are hardening into the net house and then into the transfer into the open field so this way and these are the various aspects by which you can earn uh, or you, you can start your business okay uh, and in case of uh, particularly uh, this uh, seedling based nursery various insects and pests are also there so these are the major pests and insects white grub cutworm termite okay and it can be controlled by spraying of various insecticides and pesticides so these are the major pests defoliators grasshopper so you, we can control but uh, if you if uh, proper uh, hygiene conditions we can manage okay if we maintain the humidity of uh, our uh, our nursery area then also we can uh, reduce the incidence of pests and diseases okay that's why this watering is very important as far as nursery is concerned so these are the various diseases of uh, nursery that is directly related with the excessive amount of the water okay if you are uh, irrigating ir ir irrigating too much okay then this uh, various diseases damping of wilt root rot these are the various diseases that happens in our nursery so uh, i would like to friend i would like to conclude my presentation with this four bullets uh, this nursery entrepreneurship has good potential with least risk okay uh, we can also say that uh, with no risk so tall plant nursery has high potential okay as uh, it is a it, it has high uh, uh, amount of earning and seedling based nursery is better option for small scale entrepreneurships okay so uh, clonal and tissue culture based nurseries have great potential for large scale entrepreneurships with high investment so with these words uh, uh, i uh, finished my presentation and uh, thank you thank you very much once again i am very thankful to the organizers for giving me opportunity to uh, delivered uh, lectures thank you thank you very much thank you so much uh, mr tandel sir
you have dealt with the things very systematically and descriptively. I think uh, participants have really appreciate your uh, knowledge uh, how the nursery income uh, develops and uh, how the forestry nursery have the potentials uh, to as become entrepreneurs. Thank you so much for your lecture. And one more uh, time, I would like also thank you to timely complete your presentations. Thank you, thank you. Okay, uh, now uh, I would like to invite uh, our next speaker, Dr. C.K. Timbadiya, sir. Uh, Dr. Minil, sir, uh, kindly stop sharing your screen, sir. Or may uh, I request Dr. Srivastava, sir, to uh, unhost uh, Dr. Minal Tandes, sir. Already done, sir. Already done. Okay, thank you, sir. Now, this is time for our next, invite our next speaker, Dr. C.K. Timbade, sir. Uh, presently, he is working as a senior scientist at uh, Prishikna Kendra Nozari. Uh, he has a vast experience uh, in PAK. Uh, he has 25 years experience in Nozari. He has exclusively spent 15 years in the Sivinan Kendra. So, just amazed out that how huge experience he has regarding the entrepreneurs and entrepreneurships. He has published more than 75 research papers. He has published more than 250 popular articles uh, in various languages across the nations. Uh, he is coming in contact with more than 40,000 farmers within a year. So you just try to imagine out that how, uh, ex how they export their knowledge in the benefits of the farmer. He receives more than 15 hours during his academic careers. Uh, however, Krishnita Kedar Nausari received the best KK award from ICR during his tenure as a senior scientist. So this is the uh, uh, somewhat about the Dr. C. K. T. Budesar. Now I invite Dr. C. K. T. Budesar to join the virtual platform and share their experience. I hope your experience really ignite our participants. Welcome, Dr. C. K. T. Budesar. Thank you, uh, Dr. Dusha and uh, all team uh, who are organizing uh, this webinar. Uh, I am very much thankful because I heard uh, two lectures of uh, experts. One of them uh, were uh, from farming community and one uh, Dr. Minal Tandel. Now, uh, already you introduced me. Uh, my uh, major part of the service uh, asked with Shinkyan Kendra. Uh, I am seeing here uh, more than 90 or 95 participants are hearing me. Uh, but the time is uh, noon time and uh, you all are very younger. So I will try to finish my lecture within a uh, time period. Uh, the topic is given to me by organizer role of Krishivyan Kendra. Role of Krishivyan Kendra uh, in entrepreneurial development in rural area. And I am seeing that now the talk is going on. Entrepreneurship and development for many ways are being heard by everyone. यहाँ पर मैं बात करने वाला हूँ कृषि विज्ञान केंद्र क्या काम कर सकते हैं। तो यू ऑल आर नोइंग दैट कृषि विज्ञान केंद्र इज टेक्नोलॉजी ट्रांसफर सेंटर। सिंस 1973 टुडे मोर देन 72 728 कृषि विज्ञान केंद्र आर वर्किंग इन द रोलर एरिया इन सेंट्रल डिफरेंट डिस्ट्रिक्स एंड ऑल आर इन द वेरी इंप्रेसिव � Krishvigyan Kendra is a doctor house for the farmers. Uh, here, uh, coordinator said that uh, Dr. Timbadiya is meeting more than 40,000 farmers in a year. So you can imagine from tribal farmer to very, very educated farmers are, investors are coming over uh, Krishvigyan Kendra for getting the different important of um, uh, agriculture as well as for uh, developing their business. Here, entrepreneurship means any farmer can become an entrepreneur when he is working hard with some visionary mind and some risk uh, bearing capacity. Uh, but uh, there is a need of technical input, and uh, technical information can lead um, uh, to success. Uh, so, uh, friends, and majority of the students are um, listening this webinar. Uh, I can say that 
Krishi Vigyan Kendra is a center from where you can get any technical means Krishi Vigyan Kendra is a knowledge resource center. So uh, for um, getting um, enriching or uh, become an entrepreneur, how to increase entrepreneurship uh, is a very essential and KVK can uh, enrich you. Here, uh, since uh, 15 years, I am working in the Krishi Vigyan Kendra. Uh, where I collected some information, how many types of entrepreneurship you can assess and get um, uh, to work as a business. Uh, here, honey producing, low cost greenhouse technology is also one of the um, uh, entrepreneur area. Banana chips or value addition of the banana uh, products, banana. Uh, today, the scenario is uh, there is a uh, lack of marketing, means uh, due to lockdown period. Uh, banana growers are not selling their uh, produce to the market with uh, good price. At that time, many uh, farmers come up and they have started to, to make the wafers and, and many other banana chips products. Uh, here I will talk in detail uh, what is the cost and what is the income also. Here handicraft is also one of the area in the tribal area. Uh, pickles making, we, need, we uh, are uh, seeing that uh, any dish without pickle is not possible. So pickles is also uh, demanding area and uh, for uh, developing entrepreneurship or for getting technical know-how, Krishi Vigyan Kendra scientists can help you. Tea masala unit, paper making unit, flour mill unit, these are the uh, starting point, means a small business, but uh, uh, it can reach to the money, means uh, uh, Reliance, founder, Reliance industry. Uh, neem powder production, dairy farming, mushroom, farming compost unit, he was a mechanical engineer, he is a mechanical engineer, Rajan Bhai. And he is doing a very good quantity of uh, preparing organic composting uh, and uh, selling uh, and using in their own farm also. Bamboo home making products, jam production, tomato ketchup production and kitchen gardening. Other than this, as per the natural resources available in our India, we can find, we can uh, decide um, uh, many other fields also. Here in the coastal area, we are promoting the uh, inland aquaculture, means fisheries. Uh, even in the kitchen gardening area, uh, we have started fish kitchen garden. Means, apne ghar ke aspas hi ek aisa pond bana hai small, usme fish dalay. Aur apna jo aroch ka nutrition ke liye jo fish chahiye, wo wahan se mil sakti hai. Aur ye fish ka market karke bhi acha dam kamar hai. Main yahan par jo baat karne wala hu, wo sabhi kisi ke yahan ke andar nausari hai. अपने एरिया में और गुजरात में कहीं न कहीं किसान को एडवाइस देके उसमें उन्होंने छोटा सा बिजनेस शुरू किया है आगे हमने देखा एंटरप्रेन्योरशिप डेवलपमेंट मींस क्या है वो मैं आपको समझाना नहीं चाहता हूँ लेकिन कृषि विज्ञान केंद्र आपको कहाँ मदद कर सकता है इनके बारे में थोड़ी देर बात करने वाला हूँ यहाँ पर फाइनेंशियल सपोर्ट अभी बहुत सारी गवर्नमेंट एजेंसी इनके लिए सपोर्ट तो कर ही रही है लेकिन कृषि विज्ञान केंद्र के पास एक आर्या प्रोजेक्ट है attracting rural youth and retaining in agriculture. Aaj kal jo desh aur dunia ka jo sireya dekhe, to youth are avoiding, means they are going far from the agriculture. But now the corona effect and many other changes at the world level and in the country, we all realized that agriculture is the prime need of the human being. Humne dekha hai corona mahamari mein, कोई कार परचेज करने के लिए नहीं गए कोई भौतिक सुविधा के लिए कुछ परचेज करने के लिए नहीं गए लेकिन अपने कुटुंब अपने फैमिली मेंबर को लाइव रखने के लिए जो ग्रोसरी है फूड है वेजिटेबल है फ्रूट्स है उनका परचेज करना बहुत जरूरी था इतने रिस्की जो पीरियड चल रहा है फिर भी हम ये सब खरीदने के लिए जाते हैं तो इनका मतलब ये है कि आगे के समय में एग्रीकल्चर बहुत बड़ा रोल प्ले करने वाले हैं क्योंकि आज ऑर्गेनिक एग्रीकल्चर का भी हम बात कर रहे हैं तो ये सब एंटरप्रेन्योरशिप डेवलपमेंट में हमें ये सब चीजों का ख्याल रख के आगे बढ़ने के लिए बहुत सारी फैसिलिटी कृषि विज्ञान केंद्र के ओर से मिल रही है यहाँ पर टेक्निकल नो हाउ मिल रहा है यू हैव टू इन्वेस्ट यू हैव टू गेट फंड फ्रॉम द गवर्नमेंट मशीनरी एंड मेनी टाइम सम फाइनेंशियल सपोर्ट इज ऑल्सो गिवन बाय द कृषि विज्ञान केंद्र थ्रू आर आरिया प्रोजेक्ट एंड मेनी अदर प्रोजेक्ट Here we can see that honey collection unit. In our uh, district, Saldara, in uh, Chitti Taluka, Ashok Bhai and Ashwita Ben. Both are the, uh, both are doing very wonderful work in the honey and its agriculture. 
they are collecting 50 tons of honey in a year that price 1.5 crore rupees annually and uh, uh, you can see uh, and yesterday I think you all have uh, got the information from the Dr. Basaki about the uh, honey agriculture. Uh, so uh, here these are the um, uh, equipments and uh, um, uh, se aap aage ja sakte hai, aur, uh, honey ka jo hai, wo pollination or uh, crop yield ke liye bhi uh, hai, to, uh, eh, entrepreneur ban ke aage hum ja sakte hai. यहाँ पर लो कोस्ट भी ना उसकी बात है, वेरी वेरी लो कोस्ट में तैयार होता है और छोटे किसान जो है वो बीस गुना यानी कि 100 स्क्वायर मीटर एरिया में भी वेजिटेबल ग्रो कर सकते हैं, नर्सरी ग्रो कर सकते हैं और ऑफ सीजनल वेजिटेबल लिटिल वेजिटेबल ग्रो करके अच्छा बाप प्राइस मार्केट से ले सकते हैं मैं थोड़ा गेंदी आपको एक करना चाहता हूं कि यदि ये फेनुलिक है और लहसुन है ये लहसुन यदि आप ऑफ सीजन में ऐसे छोटे-छोटे जो ग्रीन हाउस बनाए लोकोस और उसमें आप कल्टीवेट करें तो समझ लीजिए 100 स्क्वायर मीटर एरिया है 1 स्क्वायर मीटर से मिनिमम 2 केजी ग्रीन लहसुन यानी कि गार्लिक आप यू कैन कल्टीवेट और हार्वेस्ट एंड फेनुलिक भी आप इतनी हार्वेस्ट कर सकते हैं so from 100 square meter, the total yield is, uh, we can get about 150 kg uh, in a month. Because the grain uh, you are using uh, as a leafy, uh, then uh, in a small time we can harvest it. So 100 uh, kg or uh, in summer, in the price of the kid, both a char rate will set the to kisan or chote kisan. Or you be chota jump entrepreneur see the career to pay a chota kam su career. लोकोस्ट की नाउ से वो आपको मदद रूप होता है और इसमें दूसरी बात ये कि हम वेजिटेबल ग्रो करते हैं वेजिटेबल नर्सरी रेज करते हैं तो सीजन सीजन का वेजिटेबल नर्सरी रेज करके हम अच्छी आमदनी उसमें से कमा सकते हैं हमने यहां पर ये फोटोग्राफ देखा आप देखो ये प्लग नर्सरी बनाया है और इतना अच्छा वंडरफुल मींस सेलिंग रेज होता है मोर्टालिटी भी कम रहती है और मींस फ्यू टाइम में तैयार हो जाता है यहां पर हमने 9 महीने की इनकम 50000 से अधिक इनकम हमने इसमें से जनरेट किया है यू कैन सी द Okay. I think Dr. Siki Timuria sir might have facing some internet related issues. So kindly bear with us. Uh, shortly he will be back uh, on virtual platform. Thank you so much. Shortly, sir will come. However, some uh, instruction for participants are there. So you might have observed uh, we are adding quiz, online quiz for you people. You must have to submit the quiz in time. The link will provide just after completions of the of the sessions. Accordingly, you have to proceed for the quiz. 
all the participants are also informed that certificate will be issued only those participants who have completed prerequisite and post training evolution form as well as attended all the sessions and submit all the quizzes and assignment on time thank you Uh, Dr. Alok sir, are you there? Okay. I, I make him as a host. Ah, Dr. Tushar. Sir, you can start your presentation, please, sir. Dr. Timur, this is Alok sir. Okay, okay. You can start your presentation, okay. please, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank uh, you, sir. Thank you. Uh, different uh, handicraft items we can prepare in the rural area, and many resources are. Available in many districts and over many areas. Uh, Unmute yourself for Hello. Uh, here we can see the doormat, wall hanging, pulse, and uh, nowadays these the traditional items are more demanding by the urban area. So uh, in rural area, uh, we can uh, go forward uh, here. Wall hanging, uh, many uh, people are with many good art and they are preparing and uh, very good value they are getting. Uh, here, pickles uh, making unit. Uh, in rural area, we have formed many SSGs and uh, groups uh, in the tribal area as well as in the coastal and midland plain also. Here, we seasonal pickles training So, KVKK you can get the training. Here, home scientists who are giving you training and giving you the whole technical training and giving you the pickles. यहाँ पर mango, sapota और जो other crops से vegetable का भी pickles तैयार होता है तो जो sapota है उसमें से हम evaluate करके chips and powder बनाते हैं उसमें pickles नहीं बनता लेकिन mango और बहुत सारे यहाँ पर जो crop है उसमें हम पूरा अपने राज्य और country में भी इस तरह का माहौल है तो pickles बनाने का आजकल एक बड़ा business भी हो सकता है और SSG मंडल या आप uh, इतने लोगों को रोजगारी देके इस एंटरप्राइज डेवलप कर सकते हैं यहाँ पर हमने टेन पीपल का ये कैलकुलेशन किया है तो कितना प्रोडक्शन है पर डे का और कितनी इनकम हो सकती है तो लैक्स में टर्नओवर हम इसका भी कर सकते हैं और अच्छा आज आज हम देखते हैं कि बहुत सारे महिलाएं इसमें आगे निकल चुकी हैं हमारे हमारे � and uh, Jita Nayak is uh, doing wonderful work for pickle making and he got, she got a uh, uh, national level award uh, last year. Uh, here tea masala. In our um, Pathri village, uh, one group of uh, lady farmer are preparing masala. Not only tea masala, but uh, uh, sabji, uh, pav bhaji masala and many or masala they are preparing. What do they do? They use the sources of material जो सही उनका जो मिलावन करने का है उनका ख्याल रखके थोड़ा छोटा छोटा मशीनरी भी उन्होंने बसाई है और उनके आधार से अच्छा वो मसाला तैयार कर रही है तो यहाँ एनआरआई लोग हैं वो भी परचेज करते हैं और आप देख सकते हैं कि पर मंथ कितना इनकम पाई जा सकती है पापड़ मेकिंग यूनिट हम सब वी ऑल आर नोइंग means a farm woman. Two or three people have started. It's a very big brand. So, the people who have given a job, we can start this business in the village. We can calculate the material that we need. We can calculate how much per month income can be able to get 10 people. This is a very good unit. It's very good. It's a good unit. It's a good unit. It's a good unit. धंधानी है उनके लिए फ्लोर मिल का भी अच्छा काम कर सकते हैं तो वो भी एक इनकम जेनरेटिंग यूनिट है नीम पाउडर प्रोडक्शन आजकल ऑर्गेनिक फार्मिंग में और हेल्थ के लिए आज आयुर्वेदिक और ये मेडिसिनल का हम जो उपयोग करते हैं तो नीम पाउडर प्रोडक्शन इज वेरी डिमांडेड बाय द फार्मर्स फॉर स्प्रेइंग एंड ट 
तो ये बिजनेस भी अच्छी तरह से गांव में कलेक्शन करके हम कर सकते हैं ये काम जरूर छोटा है लेकिन आज आपने देखा होगा कि जीएनएफसी जैसी बड़ी कंपनी ने इनका खरीदी शुरू करके उनका कलेक्शन करके उनका जो केक तो बना रहे हैं लेकिन उनका न्यू मॉडल भी आज मार्केट में जा रहे हैं तो ये भी एक अच्छा एंटरप्रीनियर मशीन बन सकते है आज डेयरी फार्मिंग हमारे बहुत सारे किसान युवाओं ने डेयरी फार्मिंग का यूनिट शुरू किया है केवीके का मार्गदर्शन लेके आज दूध का कोई ऑप्शन नहीं है मिल्क इज नॉट डिफिकल्ट टू सेल मीन सेल करना भी मुश्किल नहीं है तो ऐसे समय में जो छोटी मोटी खेती है उनके साथ ये अच्छा कारोबार भी हम कर सकते हैं साइंटिफिक करने से उसमें बहुत अच्छा मुनाफा भी है फर्मी कंपोस्टिंग की तो बात हो गया है किसान ने बताया सब वो भी हैप्पी है और आप लोगों ने भी सुना और हम बहुत सारे आसपास के किसानों के साथ ये प्रवृत्ति सालों से कर रहे हैं तो वर्मी कंपोस्टिंग में खुद का जो एग्रीकल्चर हॉर्टिकल्चर जो कल्टीवेशन है उसमें तो यूज कर सकते हैं लेकिन चार रुपया से फोर रुपीज टू फाइव रुपीज के सेल करके अच्छी आमदनी भी हमारे महिलाएं कमाई कर लेती है अभी अभी लास्ट बीबीसी का एक जो न्यूज हमारे गांव की एक किसान महिला मंडल का जो आया था उसमें दे आर अर्निंग ट्वेंटी पर मंथ फ्रॉम द वर्मी कंपोस्टिंग यूनिट एंड अंडर द सपोर्ट आर ट्री बिकॉज दे आर गेटिंग नेचुरली शेडो यूनिट फ्रॉम द सपोर्ट आर ट्री एंड दे आर फेरिंग वर्मी कंपोस्ट अंडर द सपोर्ट आर ट्री सो वर्मी कंपोस्ट इज ऑल्सो वन ऑफ द एंटरप्रीनियरशिप डेवलपमेंट यूनिट हियर बैम्बू होम मेकिंग प्रोडक्ट ये आजकल क्या है बाजार में जब ये मार्केट में होते हैं ना तो लेडीज लोगों को अर्बन एरिया में बहुत चूज पसंद करती है और इनका दाम भी अच्छा मिलता है तो इनके बारे में भी हम बहुत सारा ट्रेनिंग कृषि विज्ञान केंद्र के माध्यम से देते हैं ये चेयर आजकल देखो ट्रेडिशनल इस तरह का सिटी अरेंजमेंट और हम ये कोरोना इफेक्ट में तो वी रियलाइज दैट के नेचुरल की और सब लोग बहुत गए हैं तो ये जो सब है बैम्बू चेयर और इनकी जो अलग अलग बनावट है भी आजकल बहुत उपयोगी है और इसमें भी हम अपना बिजनेस सेट कर सकते हैं इसे आगे जाए पिकल्स से आगे जाए तो जाम जेली और मैंने इस तरह का पैकिंग में भी हम वो कर सकते हैं मैंगो पपिया इनका ये सब बना सकते हैं वो अपना रूरल एरिया का ही प्रोडक्शन है किसानों को कॉन्ट्रैक्ट फार्मिंग के माध्यम से ये सब प्रोडक्शन करवा के इनका भी हम यूज करके अच्छी आमदनी कमा सकते हैं टोमेटो कैचअप एंड टोमेटो प्यूरी इज अवर्सल यूज डिमांड भी इतनी अच्छी है आजकल जो फूड प्रोसेसिंग इंडस्ट्री में जो एंटर होते हैं वो टोमेटो की जो वैल्यू एडिशन है वहां से शुरू होता है तो स्मॉल स्केल में इनका भी हम थोड़ा ये करके अच्छे एक एंटरप्रीनियर बन सकते हैं यहाँ पर बड़ी इंडस्ट्री भी इसमें बना सकते हैं तो ये आमदनी की बात जो है हम इसमें से भी आधार लेके वो कर सकते हैं किचन गार्डन मेरा खुद का भी एक एक्सपीरियंस है आई एम मेंटेनिंग किचन गार्डन सिंस लास्ट एट ईयर एट माय होम आई नेवर विजिटेड वेजिटेबल मार्केट टू परचेज वेजिटेबल इन एनी सीजन बिकॉज हम सभी सीजन के जो सब्जी है वो अपने घर पे ही तैयार करते हैं और इनका जो यदि इकोनॉमिक्स देखे तो मैंने जो पाया फोर थाउजेंड रुपीज आई कैन सेव मंथली एंड एन्युअली फिफ्टी थाउजेंड रुपीज हम सेव कर सकते हैं तो किचन गार्डन एंटरप्रीनियर के लिए नहीं लेकिन हर फैमिली के लिए और एक कोरोना इफेक्ट में हमने देखा कि सब्जी जो बाजार से लेने जाने की जो एक रिस्क रहता है ये और जो पेस्टिसाइडल रेसिड्यू फ्री सब्जी आज मिलना थोड़ा आसान नहीं है वही माहौल में किचन गार्डन का भी हम बहुत अच्छा काम अपने एरिया में कर सकते हैं ये अर्बन एरिया के लोगों भी कर सकते हैं और विलेज में तो हर घर के आसपास जगह है तो उसमें करके आप सीजन सीजन के सभी तरह का वेजिटेबल और साथ में फ्रूट्स एंड मेडिसिनल प्लांट्स ग्रो करके उनका फायदा भी अपनी इम्यूनिटी बढ़ाने में कर सकते है Uh, इनका मैंने इन शॉर्ट आई टोल्ड यू मोर देन फिफ्टी थाउजेंड रुपीज आई कैन सेव एन्यूली फ्रॉम माई किचन गार्डन इवन टूडे ऑल्सो सो इट इज अ गुड वन एवरी वन जहाँ जहाँ जो पॉसिबिलिटी है ये करना चाहिए ये तो हमने इनकम की बात बताई छोटा सा ये एग्जाम्पल है पोल्ट्री प्रोडक्शन भी आजकल बहुत सारे युवा किसान हमारे पास आ रहे है अभी अभी पांच युवा इंजीनियर हमारे पास आए थे और पोल्ट्री का पूरा Uh, क्या प्रोडक्शन हो सकता है कौन सी ब्रीड कितना खर्च 
कौन सी स्किन का यूज और कहा ट्रेनिंग ले सकते हैं तो केवी के इस सभी जा, सभी का जो ठीक है ये इंफॉर्मेशन जो हब है वो केवी के से आपको मिल सकता है तो आप कोई भी डिस्ट्रिक्ट में आप स्टे है आपका तो आप वहाँ के नजदीकी केवी के से आप इंफॉर्मेशन ले सकते हैं आई थिंक सेकंड एग्रीकल्चर जो है वो एंटरप्रीनरशिप डेवलपमेंट के लिए बहुत अच्छा है वैल्यू एडिशन और यहाँ पर केवी के नवसारी ने बहुत सारी कंपनियों के साथ एम मार्केटिंग का भी किया है स्वीट कॉर्न ग्रो करवा के बड़ी लाल और सराब फूड के साथ उनका वैल्यू एडिशन के लिए कॉन्ट्रैक्ट करवाए है और किसानों को अच्छा दाम देने का एक कोशिश किया है और मैंने बताया हमारे संजीव भाई नायक आज अच्छा वैल्यू एडिशन करके एक किसान ही है लेकिन एनुअली टेन लैख से ज्यादा इनकम वो कर रहे हैं इस तरह फ्रूट्स का और जूसिस का वो सब अपने बना रहे और केवी के इंटरवेंशन के माध्यम से टेक्निकल इंफॉर्मेशन उनको मिला है तो यहाँ पर केशो का भी प्रोसेसिंग शुरू करने में केवी के ने इन्वॉल्वमेंट किया है और आगे इम्प्लॉयमेंट जनरेशन जो किया है केवी के के माध्यम से वैल्यू एडिशन थ्रू ग्रेडिंग एंड पैकिंग आज आप छोटे छोटे किसानों का जो प्रोड्यूस है उनको कलेक्ट करके उनका ग्रेडिंग पैकिंग करके मार्केटिंग करने का भी एक अच्छा काम कर सकते हैं हमने यहाँ पर नवसारी डिस्ट्रिक्ट में एक सोसाइटी के माध्यम से बहुत सारे युवा लोगों को इसमें एंगेज करके एंटरप्रीनर करके उनको इनकम जनरेट करना शुरू करवाया है यहाँ पर इतने सारे जो काम किए है कृषि विज्ञान केंद्र में तो मैं मैं देखता हूं कि ऑल फार्मर्स यूथ आर हैप्पी बिकॉज़ दे हैव स्टार्टेड अभी अभी दस दिन के पहले हमने किसान के साथ बात किया कि जो यहां गन्ने का एरिया है शुगर कैन मेजोरिटी ऑफ द एरिया अंडर शुगर कैन एंड पेडी तो शुगर कैन में जो प्लांटिंग मटेरियल है तो उनकी उनके लिए हमने एक युवा किसान को जो उनके आईबर्ड है उसमें से नर्सरी अरेज करके उनका बैग में जर्मिनेशन करवा के उनका प्लांटिंग मटेरियल तैयार करके डायरेक्ट प्लांटिंग मटेरियल को फील्ड में इवन प्लांटिंग करने का काम इनका जो टीम द्वारा करने के लिए हमने एक अप्रोच करवाया तो उसमें उनको भी इनकम अच्छी होती है और किसानों को जो आज लेबर का शॉर्टेज है उनको भी उनका काम होता है तो एग्रीकल्चर में ऐसे बहुत सारे ऐसे माध्यम है वी कैन सी देट वाइड uh, जो स्कोप uh, है वो एग्रीकल्चर में है आज हम सब लोग देख रहे हैं और सभी इंडस्ट्री आज बंद है उद्योग भी बंद है फैक्ट्रिया बंद है लेकिन एग्रीकल्चर एक ही ऐसा है जो रन हो रहा है और वैश्विक महामारी में भी एग्रीकल्चर का ये जो बिजनेस चल रहा है तो इसमें बहुत सारी तकनीकी में से कोई एक तकनीकी आपके एरिया में पसंद करके उनमें जो आगे जाए और एंटरप्रीनियर बनने की कोशिश करे तो केवी के आपको बहुत हेल्प कर सकता है इस केवी के ने जो काम किया है उनके माध्यम से हम शुरुआत में जो हमारे कोऑर्डिनेटर ने बताया डॉक्टर तुषार पटेल एंड दिवेश भाई ने के बहुत सारा अवार्ड मिला है और बहुत सारा रिकग्निशन भी पाया और किसान का ब्लेसिंग भी पाया है आज बहुत सारे किसान इनका हमारे पास से इंफॉर्मेशन लेके उनकी जो छोटी छोटी कोई मुश्किल है उनको दूर कर सकते हैं तो ये सब काम करने की वजह से ये अवार्ड सब पाया है यहाँ पर सिर्फ तीन अवार्ड ही आपको डिस्प्ले करता हूँ बाकी आप लोगों को बोलता हूँ कि पंद्रह से अधिक अवार्ड कृषि विज्ञान केंद्र को मिला है तो मेरे को बहुत खुशी हुई कि आप सब लोगों के साथ कृषि विज्ञान केंद्र एंटरप्रीनरशिप डेवलपमेंट के लिए रूरल एरिया में क्या तकनीकी या कौन सी जानकारी दे सकता है तो मैं समझता हूं कि मैंने जो इतना छोटी सी इंफॉर्मेशन आपको दिया उनके माध्यम से यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड दैट केवी के इज वर्किंग इन द रूरल एरिया सो रूरल एरिया का पूरा एनालिसिस करके साइंटिफिक डॉक्टर हाउस जैसा जो सेंटर है तो आप उनके गाइडेंस से अपने इलाके में कोई भी ऐसा छोटा सा जो कारोबार शुरू करना चाहे तो आप कर सकते हैं मैं फिर से अभिवादन करता हूं हमारे पूरी भरूच की टीम को हमारे दिव्यश जी और तुषार जी ये सब लोग इतने डायनेमिक है कि ये कोरोना महामारी में भी इतना बड़ा प्रोग्राम मैं कल उनको पूछ रहा था कि भी कितने लोग इनको अटेंड कर रहे हैं तो उन्होंने बताया कि साहब इतने लोग ये दिनों में भी अटेंड कर रहे हैं और आज अभी मैं देख रहा हूँ कि अस्सी से ज्यादा लोग अभी ये बात सुन रहे है तो ये सब जो क्या है क्रेडिट है वो गोज टू भरूच टीम एंड उनके डायनेमिक और हमारे जो मार्गदर्शक और हमारे वडिल जो प्रिंसिपल है डॉक्टर के जी पटेल साहब तो ये सब लोगों का आभार मान के फ्रेंड्स आप भी मेरे साथ जुड़े हमारा परिचय हुआ 
एंड इंट्रोडक्शन हुआ कभी भी हमारी कोई भी सिचुएशन में कहा भी जरूरत पड़े तो आप हमारा फोन से भी कांटेक्ट कर सकते हैं और ईमेल से भी कांटेक्ट कर सकते हैं फिर से बरुच टीम को मैं धन्यवाद देके मेरी बात को यहाँ पूर्ण करता हूँ थैंक यू थैंक यू वेरी मच Kimbolia sir you have enlightened uh, so many activities what you have done and uh, uh, your presentation itself narrated why our kvk dosari becomes india's first kvk because under the leadership of dr sik kimbolia sir kvk dosari has done so many activities for the benefit of the environment and kvk dosari Uh, and, and uh, it is totally, totally dedicated, dedicated to the farmers. And, and uh, for uh, 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 Dr. Timbaliya, I say that the Dr. Timbaliya sir has 24 by 7 is available for the farmers. And it is indicated that he has connected with 40,000 people or farmers each every, every year. year. So, so we, we can, can see how it is a personal contact to the farmers. farmers. And, and he has started so many on-campus training programs for the farmers, and due to his training programs, so many farmers started their own enterprises. That is the vermicompost making nursery as well as the other entrepreneurship. So he works for the betterment of the farmers, and he developed so many demonstration units at KVK Nursery. And, and also, also Nausari Agricultural, Agricultural University is well known because, because of a well known among the farmers of the South Gujarat. This is because of the activities of the KVK Nausari. So, Dr. T K S T K T B J Sir, I am highly thankful to you uh, for encouraging to, to the students as well as faculties and also enlightening the activities carried out. by the kvk nausari so on behalf of kvk on behalf of uh, college of agriculture bharuj uh, i am highly thankful to you for sharing your views in this webinar thanks a lot dr siket kumar sir now uh, i request to uh, dr pradi raj sir uh, for the what of what of thanks for the whole the session of this today okay dr pradi raj sir Hello. Hello. Thank you, Dr. Dilip Sir. On behalf of the organizing committee and participants, I would like to thank respected Dr. K. G. Patel Sir, Dean and Principal College of Agriculture, Bharuj. He delivered lecture on component of natural resources for entrepreneurship development. He gave detailed information of different components. Like biofertilizer, biopesticide, botanical pesticide, pathogens, and vermic compounds of natural resources and their use and production for entrepreneurship development. I would like to thank Dr. Lalit Mahatma, Associate Professor, N.A. Nausari. He gave lecture on scope of biofertilizer industry in India. He narrated different scope of biofertilizer production in India. He explained that biofertilizer are being promoted. as an important component in supplementing plant nutrients needed of the garden i also thank to sri rajesh patel innovative farmers from entrepreneurs in dungri he delivered a lecture on vermicompost as a business point of view farmers experience 
He shared his experience with participants on vermicompost production and business. I would like to also thank Dr. Minal Kandil, Assistant Professor, ECHF Nausari, for giving valuable detailed information of different forest nursery entrepreneurship development in forest. I would like to thank Dr. C.K. Timbaria, Senior Scientist and Head, KVK Nausari. He gave details knowledge about the role of KVK entrepreneurship development in rural area and how it is helpful to start different entrepreneurship in rural community for entrepreneurship development. I would like to thank to respect Dr. E.G. Patel sir, Dean and Principal of College of Agriculture for enthusiastic support of this webinar. I special thank to Dr. D.D. Patel, webinar convener and organizing committee to support smooth running of this session of this webinar and all the participants for active participation of this session of the webinar. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Dear uh, all the participants, the today's session is over, technical session, and uh, tomorrow uh, we will meet on uh, right 9.30 a.m. Uh, for, uh, I would like to say that tomorrow morning, total five, uh, five, uh, five uh, speakers are there, among these five speakers, four are entrepreneurs. So I request to all the participants that you must have remained present uh, uh, during uh, the, the, this tomorrow's session because four entrepreneurs are there. Are there. And, and uh, you, you will, will get, get the knowledge how, how to start the entrepreneurs in different sectors. sectors. So, so uh, uh, again, again, I request, I request all of you and also I'm thankful to all the participants because uh, right now at 1.20 p.m., 74 participants are on my screen, are available on my screen. Okay, so I heartily thankful to all the participants and uh, be remain present tomorrow morning at right 9:30 a.m. Thanks, thanks a lot. Have a good day. Did you Did you Can I? Yes. Proceed further to end the meeting. Yes. 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 Y